excuse me, let me just get dressed here and fix my flippy floppy hair and welcome you to my YouTube channel. How are ya? I got a really good, no, not a good, I got a really great podcast that is called The Grass is Green with Paul Green. And we shoot a video, and this is the video. This is with Cameron Matheson, who's been on so many things that you recognize Dancing with the Stars. All My Children, a bajillion Hallmark films, of course, Home and Family, Extra, uh, Entertainment Tonight, he's won Emmys, he's, you know, his his record of success in this business is amazing, but that success didn't come easy. He's had so one of the most bizarre, wild things to overcome as a young boy where he had to walk on stilts on on uh, on a type of leg brace that makes Forrest Gump's leg braces look quite practical. Uh, and about, I share that with you. I share some pictures of that and his story of how what he had to do to overcome that. Cameron's a good human being. He's got a lot of love. He just wants to do good. Uh, I knew this interview would be great uh, because Cameron and I have a, a bit of funny history. We get into that right at the beginning. We uh, were in this male modeling competition in 1993, and, and he won it and tied it with this guy, Rodney. And uh, I didn't win it, and we, we've been joking about this for decades. So we get a chance to be face-to-face. -face. He was in quarantine, uh, way up in Canada, quarantining for his new movie, which now I can share, which is Murder, She Baked, which during this I couldn't share. So he's into that. He successfully made it through quarantine. So sit back, wait a second, don't forget to smash the like already, and subscribe, and turn on the bell so you get notified when I go live. i got Chris McNally coming next, who's from One Calls a Heart. There's a lot of other things about uh, Cameron that, we, that I, I'm not sure that you knew. Did we get into his health uh, regimen, and his, his scare with cancer, and what he's been doing to... Uh, move past it, being a father, some of his relationship secrets, because he's been married for 19 years. Just, this is what this podcast is all about. The grass is greener where you water it, and Cameron's one of those guys that nurtures the things he loves. And so I enjoyed talking to him. I hope you enjoy listening to this. Stay tuned to the very end, and at the end, I'll come back on and announce a couple more things, but please don't forget to destroy that like button. And while you're at it, destroy some limiting beliefs about yourself and give yourself a little pat on the back because you're awesome. All right. Enjoy this. Thanks. You know, Hey buddy. Uh, hey bud. I've heard, I've found that uh, sometimes the iPad works good for, for sound. It works better than earbuds like these. I'm using this to hear you, but these, these are not, I can hear you great. Just like this. Yeah. Cause I got your, I've got your pods too. I can put on if that's better. Do you want to, do you want to try it? And then just let me hear sure, the buddy. difference. Cause sometimes sure, what it buddy. does is it makes your voice like a bit kind of digitized and quiet and small. Look at you, your nature. I love that. It's so dope. Such a good decision. Dude, this is the, um, let's see. Am I on now? Can you say something? I, hey, my name's Paul. Oh yeah. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, yeah. I got you, know, you in my ear pod now. It didn't change that much. So if this is easier for you to like hear me and if you're more comfortable with this, this is this may be a little less echoey this way. Yeah, yeah. It's good. It's fine with me, man. It's great. It's great. Right. I'm just I'm I'm happy to have human contact. Oh, I know, I know, man. I mean, we'll, <laughs> just, we'll just get right into it. Is it is there anything you, you don't want to talk about? Like is there anything? No, off? man, no, 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 no. It's all good. That. You know me. I, yeah, yeah, I do. Well, this is Cameron. This is Cameron Matheson, everybody. And Ma Cameron, you know him as like, it, I was just looking, this is funny, Cameron, because I was going back. Of course, I know you from way, way back from uh, yeah. the, the male modeling days where you beat me in a competition, hands down. <laughs> but, then, but then I saw you're like on Dancing with the Stars and All My Children and then all these other like shows along the way. But you were on All My Children for like a really long time. I was. Yeah. I was on all my children for um, fourteen years, um, and that was like that was a long time, and that was a big part of my life, man. I loved it. I loved being on that show. Um, it was it was awesome. It was shortly, not that long after, you know, we were hanging out. Um, so Paul and I go back to it was nineteen. Let me think. If I graduated, 
in 93. It was probably like 95, 96. It would have been around that time that I was, it depends. No, it could have been earlier, 93 or four because. Okay. Maybe 94 then. Yeah. I was passing through Toronto on my way to Europe when that Kelly and I did, I don't, Kelly was hosting and there was this male Cameron won the, the, the best looking man in Canada award, which is not that hard. Is, not, that is, first of all, hard. you got the title wrong. That is not true. I mean, we, we should talk it's about worse. This because it's worse. It was called the Ford supermodel of Canada. They had a female and a male division and it was ludicrous. Um, that uh, so it's true that, that I, and I ended up tying with this other guy named Rodney who went on to do great things. But Paul was in that competition. And I got to say this. I'm not saying this because I say this to everybody. Everywhere I go, I just said it on Deck the Hallmark a podcast. I say it all the time. It's ludicrous that I won and you didn't. Like, like it's, it, it's just – I'm just saying this right now. I'm just saying this full on. I think I probably – at the time, I was a little older than you. I still am older than you. And I probably, like, charmed – like, I don't know. You were a little bit sh- more shy and quiet. So I, I'm trying to figure out how it happened. And I probably like kind of charmed people more. I was maybe a little bit more outgoing. Maybe I put like, maybe I campaigned better. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, I mean, Paul went on to do very, very cool things in the modeling world. And I was, I was just fine. And I, I made some good money doing some catalogs and I loved that whole world, but it was, it was a different, you know, you're, you clearly should have won that. man. Oh my gosh, it makes me laugh because I've it's it was such like a bizarre time in in life, and then to I had you know I was just just off the farm, and that's kind of my first experience of all that. So it was super trippy, but 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 um, Rodney actually remember the blonde kid? Like he worked for Bruce Weber and stuff, right? That guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did some cool stuff too. He did great. He did great. Yeah. I, I so shortly after that, I, I did a little bit of modeling, and uh, and then that's when I started acting, and that's um. In 1997, um, I uh, I booked all my children. So that was the, my whole lead into that is I did um, a little bit of modeling for a while um, in Germany and in Europe and then in Canada and Miami a little bit. Um, and then uh, I got into doing commercials and got into acting and booked all my children like very green actor. You know, I was basically studying acting in New York while I was getting paid on a soap opera. I mean, it was amazing. That's wild. And all my children was in New York then. Yeah, yeah. Or has it always been? It was in no. You're right. It was in New York for let's say it was up for 42 years. So for 40 years it was in New York, and then in the last year and a half or so, they tried to save some money and they moved the whole show to L.A. And that's what brought me to L.A. That's what like, like basically I moved with the show to L.A. and then it got canceled um, in 2011. That's wild. That is yeah, that man. is really really wild. And you're you're from Ontario. Uh, how take us back like to the very beginning how did this when you were young and like i was reading all these other crazy things like you're you you tied or won a slam dunk competition and you were the captain of like this amazing basketball team and then there was some other like sports award where it was like like you toured with the celebrity uh basketball team i didn't know this about you and like a white dude to tie with terrell what's the name terrell owens terrell owens yeah you you tied him or you beat him in a slam dunk competition Tell well me, what the hell yeah 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 no it was cool i so i did i played college basketball at mcgill this is a school in um in canada guys a university that um i i got to play on that i was one of the captains uh, me and my, a couple of the guys were the, the co-captains and um I went on, you know, as I got into the entertainment business, I, you know, all my children, I played basketball all the time at this incredible pickup game in New York and you get to meet people there. And so every year at the NBA all-star weekend, they have this celebrity aspect to the NBA all-star weekend. And I happened to know, and she was a fan of all my children, the person who was literally booking the celebrities to be part of NBA all-star weekend. So there's no way some like, you know, soap kid would have ever been invited. I mean, I was there with Jamie Foxx. I was there with Michael Rappaport. I was there with uh, Ricky Henderson, who's a baseball player. I was there with Terrell Owens, obviously, Terrell Owens. Um, so this was like, you know, the fact that I was there was, was <laughs> people were kind of like, who's this guy? Um, however, I could jump. I could jump like crazy. Not anymore, but I could then. And in the slam dunk competition, we all got to do, I think, two dunks, and then we got rated, um, you know, we got scored, 
and I had perfect score and uh, Mr. Owens had perfect score. Um, and so we had a sudden death dunk off and he missed I did a 360 crazy thing. He missed his sudden death dunk off, but because it was in Oakland and he was on San Francisco at the time, they gave him another shot. And then when he did that, he won and I lost, but technically you technically I, won. I love that. I, it was oh, a sudden death dunk off. I don't know, man. I don't know. That's such a cool. I'm that's still hanging a, on to it. That's such a crazy story, man. I, what's funny is like, you know, I know you as a, as a person and of course you're on a home and family and I've come and seen you at least five or six times since you, since you've been on there. And then, but then I look at you, (coughs) I start looking online just to find out all these little tidbits about you. Like you had this amazing 3.7 at average at, in, in, (coughs) you were studying uh, engineering of some kind, some kind of technical. Yeah. Civil engineering. Yep. And so how do you go from civil engineering, like sports guy to then modeling? Like what happened? Did somebody discover you or something? Well, I, I was never really at the level of somebody like discovering me and seeing like, oh my God, <coughs> you should be a, a big model. But I, I was out at a, I couldn't get a summer job. I usually worked for professors in Montreal in the summers and kind of to build my resume, I wanted to go off and go to MBA school um, for a business degree. And I was, I just couldn't get a summer job. And um, with a professor, I just couldn't find one. And somebody at the bar said, you know, you should go see my model agent. Maybe the, and he was a model. He was a guy that was in the business, Gabe. And he still he contacts me and he says, I, I need 10% of everything you've ever made. Uh, and he tells me to go to the modeling agency. Uh, it was in Toronto. At this point, it was in Toronto. And I did. And they took a couple Polaroids. They sent those Polaroids to a client because they were casting this one-week catalog. Uh, and I booked the job from those pol. I went in as well, but I booked the job. I didn't even have photos yet. And I booked the job from those Polaroids and I made more money in that one week than I'd made in the last three summers working for civil engineering professors. (laughs) And so I was like, Oh, so this doesn't suck. Um, and it was fun. And, um, you know, and there's other reasons that I think I, I went, ended up going that way, which maybe we'll get into, but, um, I, uh, I finished my last year engineering and then that's when I kind of got into it and started studying acting a little bit and wow. it all took off. Yeah. And so you, and what were you going to do as a civil engineer? Like what was your, why choose that? Like were you tell, tell us just a little bit about your family. Were you from, you weren't from a performance family, like, uh, not at all. No. Yeah. My dad, um, is a uh, sort of big business guy. My mom was in the ministry of health, um, which they call, uh, the department of health here, I guess. And she was, um, you know, working for the, the government. And, uh, my brother was, a uh, went to Yale and a veterinarian and very, very kind of scholastic and, and kind of goal oriented family. Um, and I kind of leave my engineering. So I was in engineering because I loved, um, science and math and building things. And I wanted to get into a design build situation. My best friend was studying architecture and I would be the engineer and we were going to go into business together and, start a design build. Um, you know, he would design it and I would build it basically like that. And I also was going to get my business degree, uh, as well to help out with the business. And I guess I took a little left turn. So that's, that's why I started in that route. Um, I still, I still wonder what would have happened had I got it. Cause my buddy, uh, still one of my best friends is very successful architect. So who knows, man. And that's what you would have done. Like, are, are you, do you find yourself, did you design your house here now or did you purchase it? Cause I saw this incredible thing recently that you and Vanessa went and you shot these pictures of you guys in the kitchen. And was that, was that your place? Oh man, no, that like, place. I think I know it's really modern, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. No, like dude. Instagram, I wish that Instagram was my place. Ad. That was like a $12 million house. That was in Malibu. And, uh, but they Airbnb, we Airbnb it for the weekend. I think it was for um, Vanessa's birthday, my wife's mm-hmm. birthday. And uh, we just got it for a couple of nights and, and we took full advantage. It took like 75,000 photos. Okay. <laughs> and, and videos. Have... And yeah, videos. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, was so, it was so beautiful. It looks like a, yeah. when I see places like that, that really architecture like that really inspires me. Have you heard? Of, yeah, that, that would have been my, my kind of direction of style though, for sure. Yeah, is kind of modern and clean and that openness mm. and yeah. I love that. Where you're at right now, um yeah. I think both Ryan Peavy and I saw Thomas DeLauer commented too. 
we're we're all jealous because the last time I quarantined, because we all have to do what you're doing right now, which is go into Canada and you're about to shoot a movie. And and I made the I thought it was a smart choice to be in the middle of Vancouver. And I did have a terrace. So but, you know, it was right right when the pandemic was just really bad. So like people would drop food off down like out down the hall and then run away. Wow, was, that's crazy. It was it was such a like seeing all that green around you and you can walk outside. Like I couldn't go outside or there was a $900,000 fine if they found me outside. Yeah. That's nuts. And especially you of all people. I mean, you would literally are Mr. Outside. I mean, God, the guy, the guy's swimming in like the Arctic ocean every chance he gets. Let me show you the front here, bud. Cause you gotta, I'll give you the address when you come up to quarantine. I found this place. Um, so that's the front yard. Tell me, um, tell me you're using your golf clubs there. I am. I'm chipping around. I got about 80 yards. And then okay. uh, hopefully I'm not going to lose signal here. This doesn't going to mess anybody up. But in the back, you would love this, man. There's just like forest for as far oh, as you can go. So, it's wow. so beautiful back here. So um, now there's a house uh, right next door, which actually um, it's he's the he owns this little cabin. OK. And uh, it's good because obviously I'm so far out if I didn't if I ran out of water or something happened or whatever, I'd be in trouble. So it's nice. He's, he's an awesome guy. And, uh, and it's worked out. They, they come and they drop off food, um, once or twice a week. Uh, and I just kind of plan my meals out. Well, you know, you're like that. And, uh, and it's wow. been, it's been really, really great. I, I, I'm, I am looking forward to being a normal human and kind of going to do stuff eventually, but it's been uh, 10 days now. Uh, so I got another, well, today and four more and then I'm done. Yeah. Yeah. How has it been going to be in quarantine like that? Like, how does your mind work with it? Are you, are you loving that emptiness of space or have you been just busy with things like this? Like, (laughs) no, I've done, I've done a a bunch of, um, kind of zoom things and meetings, Uh but, uh, I came into this, um, I, I have a feeling very much like you, you would have, um, I, I like Paul, a very big meditator completely changed my life and it's one of the most important things to me period and i don't often get real designated quality time to be able to just be you know and and to work on um my meditation practice and so i had a structured meditation retreat i do um three sessions uh every day and then i also do three sessions of um what i'll call kind of meditation with movement it's like sun salutations kind of like a a thing that I do, um, I'm doing very gentle workouts. I'm not working out hard. I'm trying to keep my pulse rate nice and low while I'm here. The parasympathetic nerve system just to kind of really rest and, and, and reset. Um, and uh, this is the most I've talked and done anything, even in my other interviews. I'm just excited to see uh, Paul. But I, uh, it's, been, uh, it's, it's been really, really, really nice and uh, very much needed. I'm, I'm giving myself the permission to sleep in because I, I typically don't. So for me, sleeping in is like seven o'clock. I can sleep in. I try to stay in bed till seven o'clock, really catch up on sleep. Um, being on Home and Family uh, and then Entertainment Tonight before Home and Family are, are very um, sort of adrenally draining and straining gigs. And uh, right. Right. And you've done work with uh, extra and, you know, you've hosted a bunch too, but um, I just need this kind of like adrenal cortisol uh, yeah. reset and it's been really nice. I love that. And just so you know, for this interview too, like you can, you don't have to be on at all. Like you and I can be like halfway into like a Zen, a Zen meditative space. I, I totally get that. And I always watch, you know, I've, I've hosted very little and, but watching how you're on all the time and your energy has to be up, like up, 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 up. And I look at that. I'm just, I'm in awe that someone can sustain it that long. And for an interview like this, like it's super casual and it's, my they're you know longer form we're not i'm not in a rush to go anywhere you may have a you may have a sun salutation thing scheduled but you just let me know we didn't even talk about the the length of it but who who uh so this this let this be a continuation of your retreat cameron beautiful and thanks and, buddy because honestly i get that you don't have to be on whatsoever and i'm gonna i don't i i, I tend to be pretty like casual with these things but i'm fascinated fascinated with 
so many aspects of you and so like what at 51 years old, how you look like you look. And I've, and I know we'll get to all this stuff, but like, I know you came through a health scare and this, this meditation thing that you're doing right now, did somebody like, what, how did you get, how did you get hooked on meditation? And is it, are you doing uh, TM or what kind of meditation are you doing? It's um, no, it's not TM. It's, um, uh, sort of a, a, a Tibetan Buddhist lineage that I've been kind of following for a while. It's very, very user friendly, very modern day, um, but it's it's basically Eastern and um, uh, Buddhist psychology and philosophies about just the happiness of the mind and the way you can really train your mind in ways to uh, lower stress, to increase happiness, to reduce anger, to reduce cravings and attachments, and um, really, really specific opponents to some of the struggles that we all have, the stress and anxiety and depression, et cetera, really a specific kind of mind psychology and philosophies uh, that you meditate on uh, to kind of, kind of get ingrained in, into your mind a little bit deeper than, let's say, just kind of go into therapy or reading a self-help book, which are, which are great. Um, but as maybe some of you guys know that are watching, um, meditation definitely um, is able to kind of get at it at a lower level, a deeper level, so it's more ingrained um, in in your mind and your everyday life. And so, the way I got into it, I, um, I I was so uncomfortable in my own mind. I was completely and totally unable to sit still to to be alone, falling asleep, I had to be distracted massively so that I could fall asleep. Cause if I sat there alone without any, just like, I mean like music or, you know, just doing some sort of noise, something to help me sleep. I couldn't, I couldn't in New York when I was on all my children, I couldn't sit in the backseat of a cab and go across town, which is maybe let's say 20 minutes. I couldn't do it without being plugged in, being on the something like I couldn't just sit. I couldn't be, um, I had no, control over my emotions or my mind or anything like that. Um, I was, you know, generally a pretty happy guy, but more of a, an excited happiness, you know, sort of like, like I am to see you right now and doing this and connecting with another human on this podcast, <laughs> you know, sort of more jacked all the time. Yeah. And, um, and so I was going through a tough time with my wife. We were, we were having a tough time together and I was struggling in, in just personally a little bit. And we were struggling as a couple. And this was back in um, 2006, maybe. And um, she went to this meditation class and um, she came back and she just said, like, she looked at me the honestly, the only other time she'd ever looked at me that intensely is when I was in really deep trouble. And I thought, oh my God, I'm in trouble again. But she looked at me and she said, you need to come with me next week to this class. And I was like, oh, okay, sure. And I went to the class and it's a, it was a mixture of guided meditation as well as, um, you know, philosophy, like Eastern philosophies and psychology that just the sort of psychology of happiness, really, um, in a way that sort of more of an Eastern philosophy, less than, you know, getting everything that we want here in America. You know, this is more of like how we can be happy from the inside. Mm -hmm. And um, I was... I loved it. I loved the philosophy and the psychology. And I, I was fast. It was logic. It was like, just put it into practice. See if it works for you. Try this. Does that work? Okay, cool. Try that. Meditate on that. How does it feel? Like it was very um, user-friendly and our own experience. And, and that very logical is very mathematical, very scientific. And I, I, that's my background. So yeah. I kind of like that. I like it was just a, I was my own self experiment with some of these psychologies and, and things just to watch my mind. And um, but what I hated <laughs> was the meditation. I couldn't sit really? still. I couldn't. It was <laughs> so painful. Here I am in this small little class with maybe about twenty people on this chair. It wasn't like on a cushion or anything. It was just like chair, very casual. And uh, I could not stand it. And it was so painful for me. It was literally painful. And um, I just stuck with it because I knew in my own life, uh, maybe people can relate to this, whenever something's really, really tough, whenever something is really challenging, it usually means we need to kind of do more of it. Like there's, you know, like generally if something's like the first time you got in the ice water, I'm sure it wasn't that easy. And so, you know, you just kind of stick with it. And I, uh, I knew I needed it and I stuck with it. And over time, um, I crave for times to be alone with my own mind. Now I, 
I can't wait to be have the opportunity to just sit and to be still and not have to do a million things. And and so it changed um, my life in like so many ways as far as mm. my you know ability to be you know a good dad and a good husband and to yeah. be a good friend and to for sure work and things like that you know the external stuff but just my overall state of happiness regardless of whether things are going my way or not mm, um right. you know that's the key that's the real key if you can work on your happiness so that you know you're okay you accept situations with the challenge you still do what you need to do to try to fix the situation if you can but by doing it with a peaceful and a happy and content mind um just makes life so much better. And then obviously when things are going well, you appreciate it and you meditate on gratitude and you, you know, offer it up and try to benefit others. Um, and either way, so that way, whether things are going well or aren't through meditation practice, your, your, your peace of mind, your, your sort of inner happiness becomes much more stable. I really, I love that. And it's like, you're, you are one of those guys that has a lot of energy and a lot of that internal, like doing 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 so to have something that allows you to be and i'm i'm very similar i go and go and and the meditation for me has been really helpful i did a 10 day vipassana have you ever done one of those or looked into one of those i haven't i've certainly heard about them though they seem to be just uh changing people's lives yeah yeah i hated it it was like my 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 fiance is the opposite she loved it because it was so peaceful for her for 10 days you don't look anybody in the eye you eat two small vegetarian meals a day and you sit for up to 12 hours a day in, you know, in a type of meditation a position. Sure. That's a lot. Uh, That's a lot for any, for anybody. I don't care who you are. Right. Right. And my, my dad had just passed and had just lost a baby in, in a pregnancy at that time. This was uh, maybe Ooh. eight, eight years ago or so. And all I wanted was a hug and all I wanted was human interaction, but it was really good because I had to go in and not just get, you know, something from the wow. outside, it had to go from inside. But the, the, I broke through, I think on day eight, where at day eight, I was like, Oh, this is what it but it took me so long. <laughs> but good for you. Good for you to stick with it. And, and yeah, like, that's great insight to, to recognize that maybe at that time in your life, you really did need to kind of go inward, you know, maybe at that time, yeah. maybe a hug, obviously, is always a good idea. But, um, yeah. you know, that's cool that you stuck with it. And you I'm yeah. sure I'm sure you healed a lot of inner wounds that way. I think so. At least was present to the experience rather than just staying busy and distracted and 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 doing so much that I was able to just be a little bit and and actually enjoy the space between the notes. Like what you know what, what about with music is like the music is the space between the notes, and I feel like mm. meditation creates that space between all these events in our life i love that i didn't know that you were yeah. a meditator and so vanessa yeah. brought you there how, how long ago 2006 and i've been um meditating regularly uh since then and so when i was on all my children um back 10 years ago i'd say i i was at my most kind of committed uh, structure, you know, as far as how much I did and how much I studied and I loved it. And it was, uh, incredible. And then as I got into, um, kind of gigs as they come and then also hosting jobs, you know, I was doing good morning America for a while and then entertainment tonight and then home and family. Those were uh, tough on my meditation practice in the sense that the, the schedule wasn't set and, it was just easy for me to skip a meditation. And so I always do my morning, always, always do my morning practice, but I'd love to do another one throughout the day as well. Um, and uh, now up here, I'm doing basically six a day. So that's pretty cool. Really? Wow. That's got to be, that's got to be, uh, when you have that level of time, you know, I always, you always, I always fantasize about being alone in a cabin for a while, but I also really enjoy people so much that I think, it, that I've, I, I know I would enjoy the time, but then when I see another human being, I'm just such an, I'm such an extroverted person. Like, um, but I, I love that. I'm going to take you up on that. And I know Ryan PV was all over it too. I just saw him on your Instagram. I think, I think you're, yeah, this, yeah, yeah. This, this is going to be a busy place for people that like nature. Cause <laughs> I told the owner, I told the owner, I said, I'm, I'm getting all these uh, questions about where this place is. Jack Wagner also uh, asked about it. He wasn't crazy about the fact that the food only comes every uh, like twice a week. 
Um, that to me is fine because I prepare my own food anyway. Like I, room service to me is um, not my favorite thing. No, it's it, me either. I mean, being in a hotel experience, it's I never feel good after room service. It's just I've been very very few restaurants do I leave going like feeling great like the experience could have been great and the food could have been great but rarely do you get all of it like a good atmosphere really good tasting and then feeling good when you eat out and like fancy i mean it's i don't know about you i know you're i i want to get into a little bit how in the world you look the way you do at 51 years old it actually um it's it's really inspiring dude like your fitness and like there's this picture of you and you're by your pool or something and it's it looks like you have like two percent body fat. Like would you and Thomas Delauer like hang out with each other or something? Like I saw I'm not that. even I'm not even in the same class as that guy. If you guys don't know who Thomas Delauer is, just go ahead and Google him. The guy is literally like a genetic phenomenon. I don't know how it happens. But no, thanks, man. I I mean obviously at that time I was we always fluctuate. I was working out, that was during the the quarantine, and I made a real commitment at that time too to do certain workout every day. And, um, I got a lot of sun too. So I was all like tanned and I was eating super clean at the time, like very, well, not clean. Yeah. Like super low carb at the time. Um, which doesn't always necessarily mean clean, but I was eating low carb and clean. Um, and, uh, and so, yeah, I was, I was like, but I, 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 I care a lot about my, my health. And yes, I, I you mentioned it earlier. I went through a kidney, um, cancer, scare and um journey uh back in 2019 um and we can talk more about you know what what i've learned about about all that but i um i basically try to eat um my whole life i you know i don't drink um i don't smoke or do drugs or anything like that um that helps uh but i also eat just organic real good quality food the best food that i can get and i know um you do too and i know that's a big thing for you i think you i think you lean a little bit more on the vegetarian uh vegan if i'm not mistaken at least at times than, than i do i eat probably 80 percent vegetables and and fruits and vegetarian but i do have some wild caught fish and things like that if i do eat meat it's like it's grass-fed and pasture raised and humanely raised and things like that although i'm not doing that at the moment meeting mostly um, just a little bit of fish and then veggies and, and fruits. But I, um, I, I just feel better that way. I also do something called intermittent fasting, something else I know that you do as well, Paul. Um, yeah. I, I'm not doing it while I'm here f for various reasons, but uh, I mean, I still fast for like 12 to 13, 14 hours a day, but I, um, I, you, I was doing like 16, 18 hours a day. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's very, very good for your body. It's great to uh, replenish cells and give you energy and help your mental focus and help burn fat as a fuel source. And um, so many, so many benefits, good for your gut and digestion. Um, so th those are some of the, my, my main things I think that, um, that I do that are like a, you know, a big deal for me, I would say. Is there, is there something that like, I know every body is different, right? But like, is yes. that, and, and I, you know, cause, but, but I think you hit on, there's certain foundational things, which is a lot of high water content food, like you're talking about fruit and vegetables. I'm not a vegetarian, but I lean, I, I eat more or less like you do. Like I will have some wild caught salmon or some other wild caught fish. And occasionally like, cause Kate's an O blood type and Australian. So she loves meat, but occasionally she'll, will do lamb and I'll have like a little bit of it. But I, um, one of those things, I don't know about you, but that seems to help a lot of people is, is if they do shift to high quality fruits and vegetables and, and really high quality food, that's not packaged and, and, and no processed sugars and no processed like goodies in general, most people can really turn their health around by then like, it's a Tony Robbins thing too, right? Where he talks about having 70, 70% 70 high water content food. So organic fruits and vegetables and it's um and you have you always like have you always done that or have you been on like keto sometimes and like a ketogenic diet or have is this something that you've kind of always because i don't ever remember you not looking like this shape <laughs> oh well good man thanks i'm hanging on i'm hanging on um i i generally have done keto for like in general i'm a low carb kind of keto guy and so for people that don't know it's a big buzzword these days all it really means um, is eating 
uh, a lot of really good quality, uh, low carbohydrate vegetables, like low starchy veg. Um, and then, you know, things like berries, lemons, um, uh, for as far as fruits go, cantaloupe, melon, things like that, even watermelons, fairly low carb. And then, um, good quality protein sources, uh, that are, uh, that are um, obviously where you get your protein from, but but really the big thing about keto is that you you have a lot of healthy fat, so you have a lot more health fat in your diet than you're used to, and those fats can come from from nuts and from seeds. They can come from things like olive oil or avocado oil or avocados. They can come from uh, coconut products like coconut oil, coconut mm-hmm. butter. Um, some people in keto even do some dairy if it dairy works for them. They can do dairy because uh, that's mm-hmm. low carb. Uh, but yeah, so most, most of my, most of my life, most of my adult life, I've been kind of a low carb guy. I, I haven't, it all hasn't always been clean though. You know, the most, um, aesthetically in shape I've ever been, I was eating what they call a dirty keto or a, a it was at the time it was Atkins and it was dirty because all I cared about were macronutrients, right? The mm-hmm. proteins, the carbs, and the fat. And I wasn't really looking at the quality of the food and looking at the nutrient absorption and, and phytonutrients and things like that. And I was shredded and really, really, really lean and, and still pretty strong. Uh, but I wasn't really all that healthy. And, and now I, I care much more about um, my overall health. I'm, I'm doing a big liver cleanse while I'm up here as well. I'm, I kicked coffee for my, literally, I think it might be the first time in my whole life I don't want to say kick coffee, but I've been off so for nine days now. Okay. You're taking a nine day break. Now, are you doing the liver gallbladder cleanse where you lay on your side and do take olive oil and you, are you doing the full flush? Are you doing the clean, a no, cleanse? No, I'm not doing that. No, no. Basically, um, I've got a coach and he's a pretty remarkable guy. Um, he's like a fitness and health coach that I'm brand new with. And we did a whole bunch of testing. I, I do tons of testing, blood tests, urine tests, yeah. stomach, gut tests, all this stuff. I've been doing it. That's how I found my kidney cancer. But I, um, I, so he looked at my hormone levels and, um, also, uh, my liver and kidney function. And, um, you know, we need this to kind of do a little gut detox, like a gut reset, as well as a, uh, a gentle detox of the liver and the kidney, um, and try to get some hormones balanced. My cortisol levels are all off because of that adrenal fight or flight also because I was drinking a lot of coffee, a lot of black coffee. Um, that's my, that was my one vice and maybe one day it will be again, but for the moment it's not, I'm drinking a lot of tons of tea though. Oh my God. What, Jesus crazy. What, what kind of tea are you drinking? So I've got licorice tea right now, licorice root, but, uh, I've got dandelion root tea and mint are sort of my main kind of, uh, daily teas. I've got chamomile before I go to bed. I've got ginger, of course. I'm eating a lot of ginger and turmeric. Um, and I feel like I'm forgetting some of them, but those are, those are the bulk of what I cycle through the day. Yeah. I drink a lot of, a lot of that. Yeah. Wow. And so this guy's the sound, this guy sounds really great. Did you, how let's, let's talk about your kidney for a second because it's like, you know, I think everybody looks at you and they're like this healthy guy and they're like, oh my God, if, if, if he had something like that go wrong, like the, how does some, like, meaning no one would expect you to have something like that. How did you discover it? And did you find out why it happened or is it just an anomaly? Do you know what happened? No, we've got a really, 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 really good indication as to why it happened. Um, uh, I found it because of how sort of nuts I am about doing all the blood work and and I do, uh, you know, gut tests and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I just kept on seeing um, and feeling things that just didn't make sense. My numbers weren't getting better across the board. They weren't, some things weren't um, directly related, uh, but they were, you know, there's a lot of things that are indirectly related, right? Um, yeah. If you get a kidney cancer and it hasn't spread, and it's not that large, I mean, mine was a medium size, about four centimeters. Um, and so I wasn't feeling pain. It wasn't in my lymph nodes. And they, they, even though it'd been growing for many, many years, they feel, they think it was growing for as many as um, eight to 10 years slowly, but they likely didn't spread because I'm, I'm super kind of low sugar and, and eat pretty clean. So I didn't have a lot of energy to kind of go through my body luckily. Um, and I found it in some of those tests. Um, I thought it was a gut 
issue. I thought it was a gut. I thought I had colon cancer or something or something in my gut and uh, it was my kidney. But ultimately, um, I, I'd never done, even though I'd done all these tests, I'd never done any toxin or mold tests. I never thought to see what my toxicity levels, because I eat, I don't drink, you know, water out of plastic bottles. I, I eat organic. I do like everything I consume is from either whole foods or from the market, from the ground. Like I'm really, really careful. And I don't wear a lot of makeup and I don't put stuff in my hair. I don't have now with that said, I have lived in New York and LA, which are both kind of very full of toxins, but in, you know, in the air generally. However, there's millions and millions and millions and millions of people that live in those cities and are just completely fine. Don't get kidney cancer. So anyway, I did a toxin test and a mold test and uh, my toxin levels were so high that it was hard to imagine. And, um, and that's not good. Every cancer that you'll ever hear about, everything, you'll look at lists of the causes and on that list is toxicity, is your exposure to toxins. Um, are these heavy and metal, so, are these heavy metal toxins, or what kind of toxins? Like what's alum, like aluminum and mold and everything? Yeah, there's some heavy metals in there for sure. There are also some toxins from like plastics and weird. So the thing is, is that you know you think, oh my gosh, I got to cut. Also, there, I had a lot of mold, high mold content too, and mold is also very hard on the uh, liver and the kidney because um, your body's trying to get rid of it. But my, basically, my detox system was very, very weak. It just wasn't keeping up with, it wasn't necessarily that I was exposing myself to tons of toxins, even though I put in air filtration systems and I, you know, I, I fixed everything on the outside, you know, as best I could, but the toxin levels weren't coming down. This is now after my kidney cancer, right? So now I'm making sure that nothing else comes back. And my toxin levels are still very high, although it does take some time for them to be flushed out of your system. Um, excuse me. So. What um, what I re what we realized is that uh, I, I definitely just have a marginally functioning functioning um, liver and kidney, and um, they're really not so uh, effective at detox um, like maybe you or somebody else that would be exposed to the same toxins. So it's not necessarily very unlikely, considering how I live and my activity level and how much I sweat and all these things. It's not how um, I'm just being sort of bombarded by toxins. It's more that I, uh, I'm just not dealing with them very well. And so it's really important for me to get those systems kind of up and running and, and flush them out. Wow. Now, is there, yeah. that's, that's just so wild because we all, we all think about, you know, the inner terrain of our bodies is, is yeah. so hidden to us and, you know, like not everyone's doing blood blood scans and blood tests like you or even me, and and it's one of those things that is just like as a is was there an emotional component to it where you were like because the kidney would be related to like you know Louise Hay, uh, Louise Hay she has this book on like your body what there's certain parts of your body that are connected to certain emotions did you have a look into any of that stuff? Yeah, I did. I'm trying to remember what I found out. I, I've always had these really kind of sore, achy spots and this weird point in the bottom of my foot. And that was connected. And I was like, that's weird. And then also there was some other connection that I, that I, something I struggle, you know, not struggle with, but I've noticed in my, in my body. Um, and that was also connected to uh, no, gut and, uh, and kidney and liver. My liver enzymes are also, um, you know, something I got to work on too. So, you know, it's, there's something going on with my whole, um, with that whole system. However, uh, it's so much better and I feel great. And you guys should know I'm, I'm cancer free now after a year and a bit. Um, I did a big MRI and, and all, all is looking good. And, and I feel that um, just having this information is going to change a lot for me. I love that. And you helped a lot of people too. I remember when it happened to you, there were so many people I knew and I remember it really affecting me too when I heard that you were going through something like that. But like it's it's the level that you're you're connected to your body and the way that you do take care of it would give, you know, it it's it must be so interesting to experience something at that level and then and have the awareness that you have of your body. Is that would what would you what is the biggest thing you learned from this? 
you know, being a father, being a husband and like everything that you went through, what's the, your biggest takeaway from, from well, that? I think the biggest takeaway is just how fragile life is, you know, <laughs> um, we're just literally like a water bubble, you know, like our life, it's just so fragile. And, um, and to, to really kind of make the most of it, um, while we can, I think that's one big lesson. And when I say make the most of it, I don't mean like, you know, some people kind of mis misunderstand that and think, Oh, I better go and just kind of party it up and get nuts and whatever. Like it's more that just to make life meaningful and, and kind of to really kind of, um, work on your, your, in, your, your insides in a sense, physically as well as emotionally, uh, while we can. So that's one big takeaway. The other thing that I think that I, I really learned, um, about it is, is, I guess, I guess that, um, there's so many people out there, so many people out there suffering and going through stuff uh, like I went through and a million times worse um, and different. And and for us to kind of go through something like that and not have it make me feel more compassion and love kind of for other people struggling, it would be a big mess, you know? So mm. I, I try to do that in my meditation practice um, as I'm, I know you do too. Uh, as well to connect with others and to have you know love and care about others and be concerned about their suffering but when you go through something like that and it was definitely i had some real tough days for sure but compared i didn't have any chemo i didn't have any radiation therapy it was just you know it was a surgery and, and some other stuff but um i i was very very lucky and so many people are going through so many tough times so i i really try to use it use those memories to try to um uh, develop, you know, a lot of love and compassion for other people. And I think also what that does is it helps my fear. It helps my anxiety and my stress around it. Like, is it going to come back? Cause mm -hmm. you know, odds are it will come back somewhere. Um, so when I do that, it, it just sort of like, there's the physical issues that we're working on. Like, you know, I got to do what I can to make sure cancer doesn't come back in my body. But then there's also the emotional side which is related to the physical, but, and the emotional side is just how we deal with it. And so how I try to deal with it is more that I, um, yeah, I just try to think about others and go through the same or worse. I think my food delivery just got here. Hold on one second. Yeah, go ahead. Go grab it, man. No, let me just see. Oh, there, no, no, she's still shopping. Oh, they're okay. out of cucumbers. Oh. oh, let her know. Go ahead. Handle, handle that. Let her know what, give her your alternate, uh, your alternate. What would your alternate zucchini? be cucumbers? Zucchini. Hey, are you going to cook it? Are you making juice? Zucchini and red pepper, red bell pepper. Um, uh, no, the cucumbers I won't, but the zucchini I will. Uh, only, only uh, my my gut does better. Like the cucumber, I can handle zucchini as raw zucchini. Although it's so good for you, um, I have I have trouble with my gut, so it doesn't 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 work well with me. That's right. And did did you interview Doctor Gundry, or was was did, yeah. did Doctor Gundry come when you were? What do you think about that whole the plants that can kill you, like the lectins that are? Um, I always like to hear someone who's the, as into fitness as you, because there's you know, and once again, some people it, it's not for everyone. Like I know some people that have you know the Italians use tomatoes and eggplant like left and right. And they lived, there's many centurions there. So what yeah. you interview, you actually interviewed Dr. Gundry on your, on home and family, right? Correct. Yeah, no, I, I, I definitely there's, so I had a high, really, really high level of oxalates. Oxalates are one of those ways. So we're talking about the ways that plants defend themselves. So plants, you know, animals Just can hold, defend themselves. Hold, hold on one second. This is the third time you did this and I freaking love it about you. So we, we, you and I talked about intermittent fat. We talked about a couple of things like keto and you stop and you make sure that the people listening know what the devil we're talking about. Like you're such a natural. Is that okay? I love it. You're such a natural interviewer. Like I'm casually <laughs> throwing out Dr. Gundry and lect lectins and you just very generously build the, the context <laughs> as, as, so that everyone listening understands. Thank you for doing that. That's your third. I got a lot to learn from you on interviews, man. Keep going. No, man. No, no problem. Hold on. I got to tell her I want lots of, um, uh, lots of each. I don't know, whatever that means. Figure it out. She'll figure it out for me. No, um, no. Yeah, what so, is it? What did you tell her to get lots of what? She, yeah, she said one bell pepper and one zucchini. And I was like, no, I'm here for five days without you, man. I got to have more food than that. Right, like so no, our, I just yeah, gave her, just yeah, I just said lots of, lots of each. Yeah, get a bunch yeah. of each. I'll, I'll nice. eat it. She'll, um, she'll figure that, she'll figure that out. 
but to your point, I mean, I really, there's definitely truth to the fact that plants um, have ways to defend themselves and they have these yeah. sort of, um, I think they're called mycotoxins. I can't remember what they're called. Yeah. Just, just like inner toxins that, that maybe would make an animal kind of not feel good if they ate them kind of thing. And um, if you eat too much of it, the, the animal will naturally go to something else. And that's how they protect themselves. And, but to your point, and it's so important, some people can deal with those no problem. If you have somebody like me that has trouble flushing through some of these toxins, they can build up. I was having a green drink every day, breaking my fast with this beautiful green juice and my oxalates, which is one of the, um, I don't know if they're actually technically toxins, but one of these items that you're, you got to watch out that plants use to defend themselves was very, very, very high. And I couldn't figure out why I was so achy and and that's one of the side effects of having high oxalates. And so, um, I mean, there's also lectins. Lectins are the big, sort of the big one that everybody talks about. Lectins are in like, you know, legumes and um, I think potatoes, but not sweet potatoes and things. Yeah, but like seeds to and, and tomatoes and eggplants. And yeah. Like night, yep. Nightshades and stuff. Nightshades mm -hmm. too. That's right. Lectins are mm -hmm. all those as well. Um, and I just by me, I generally feel better when I'm being a little aware of that stuff. I certainly yeah. don't. It's not my main concern to avoid. Right. Like when I have cucumbers, for instance, cucumbers are fine, mm -hmm. but no skin and no seeds. So I'll take the skin off, but I'll eat the seeds. I'm not, I'm not going to yeah, like, that's gnarly. That's a big job. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm not, you know what I mean? So I do what I can. Um, and then again, I'll, I'll look at how these things are coming up on some of my reports that I, that I get tested on, but no, there's definitely truth to it. But I think your point is the best point is that is we're all different. Yeah. We all can handle different foods. We're all, yeah. our genetic makeup is a little different. Mm -hmm. Those people in Italy could probably eat all the nightshades they want and live till 110. Um, you know, for yeah. me, they, they don't work quite as well, but yeah. I mean, your and genetics play so different, you know, uh, the, uh, when I eat close to my blood type, like the things that my ancestors ate, I find that seems, I feel pretty good with that. Uh, I know that that diet's been debunked, but then it's come back into fashion and then it goes away. And it's just like, but, and on that the point, paleo? what? No, the blood type diet. So oh, you, blood like, type. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm an I'm an A negative, and so there's there's red meat. I apparently I don't have the enzyme to digest red meat properly. Um, that makes so much sense. Yeah, I, but whereas my ans again, my ancestors are Norwegian and Dutch, and they handle you know I can handle dairy really well and fish really well, and then the heartier, rootier vegetables because of the north. Whereas, so it's it's just and and I it, you know before we leave health, what is one generous, big health tip that you found that you can share with the people that are going to be listening here and watching that you found is just universal like that, that pretty much because, because there, some folks are going to hear us and be a little frustrated because we're, it's so specific, right? And this is where mm -hmm. health and nutrition and fitness can be overwhelming for people because yeah. where they're sitting is Maybe they don't have, maybe they're overweight or don't have energy and they, you hear so much conflicting information, Cameron, that maybe yeah. someone like you and I, who are so obsessed with it, kind of can follow it and spend a lot of time and money and supplements yeah. and discovering what works for our body. But not everybody has that, the time or the interest and like, have you found one or two things that you can just like, this is what I say and it helps a, a large amount of people. Yeah, it's such a good point, man. You're so right. It's so it's even frustrating for us. And we're and we're like, we live it and we like we're obsessed with it. And it's still frustrating and confusing and whatever. Um, I, I would say the the one, the couple of things that I can say that in my own experience, and then also in the experience of people that have, you know, maybe listened to me or talked to me about it or whatever. Um, I would say two main things. And one is incorporate some level of fasting uh, into your life. And uh, intermittent fasting for try to go at least 12 hours every day um, from your last meal the day before until that you eat the next day. Um, if you can do a little bit longer uh, on occasion, great. If you can do a little bit longer regularly, even better. Um, and and you can't if you can't do intermittent fasting, then just try to do some fasting. You know, there's a reason why almost every religion incorporates fasting into their um, sort of annual schedule of things to do as, as a religion. Cause it's, it's been around for a long time. Socrates said it was like the, it was the best medicine 
uh, uh, out there. Um, there's, there's just a lot of validity to taking a break uh, from eating. So I would incorporate either intermittent fasting or, you know, longer fasting, but, uh, you know, different schedules. And then the other thing I would say, no matter how you eat, no matter what you're eating, try that. And then the other thing I would say is do your best to reduce processed food, processed um, things that are made in a factory um, versus, you know, picked from the ground or, you know, caught in the ocean, things like that. Um, those are just, just do your best to reduce processed food and, and try to incorporate some fasting into your schedule. And I, I honestly believe that no matter how you eat and no matter what philosophy you're following, whatever, what works for your body, I think th those two things are going to help. I love that. I mean, right next to it are like good sleep and hydration, right? Like it's almost, well, it's, it's really hard to do just two, isn't it? I kind of, I gave you an almost impossible task, but it's like, no, you, I, but sleep is probably number one, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Like That's it's, true. it's, it's definitely up there, right? Like high, and drinking yeah. water, like if you're dehydrated, your, your, your cell function, your organ function can't, can't detox, can't. Yeah. And if you don't sleep, your organs can't rejuvenate, especially if you, you get to bed early. I think I text you after 10 last night. And I, as soon as I sent the message, I was like, <laughs> I was like, shoot, I know Cameron gets up really early. I guarantee you he was in bed and his organs are rejuvenating and I'm up at 1130. I'm going to miss my liver because I've learned just for some context because i've um i've learned that the if you go to bed any later than 10 or 10 30 there's certain organs that don't get your the entire rejuvenation time like after midnight or wow. one they've missed their window it's almost based on certain circadian circadian rhythms and where the sun is and when the sun sets your liver and kidney and certain organs rejuvenate when they're when you're asleep but after like midnight one, two, it goes into an other organ. So this is, I had this hilarious thing when you wow. messaged me this morning that you meant tomorrow. I was like, oh no, that was last night. You were better. <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah. Cause you like, you take, cause Paul texted me so late, 10 o'clock. Um, <laughs> and I was asleep or trying to be asleep. Uh, I, I got the text in the morning and I thought he just texted me in the morning cause it was alert new on my phone. And I was like, oh, I thought we were doing it. Anyway, it was confusing. Yeah. But. So those, I mean, those are some nice low hanging fruit and, uh, pardon, pardon the pun, but what you shared and, and, you know, my uh, fiance and I take a group of people through a bit of a discovery into mind, body and health. And so Kate's a Tony Robbins trained strategic intervention coach. And, you know, through my years of fitness, I share some of the things like intermittent fasting is a big thing, um, that, that we share and getting like lots of fruits and vegetables and, and the sleep is a, one of those pillars and hydration is one of those pillars and processed food. There's like a whole thing of going through the house and looking for chemicals under the sink because, and just the chemicals around us that you wash your clothes with and you wash your, there's certain things like that, that, um, I'm very passionate about helping folks who at least get those pillars, those foundational things that, that when, you know, as life comes up there, just to understand a little bit, um, what, what, what makes to begin to feel, um, some level of vitality and, and hot and health in, in your body. And cause once you feel good inside, it's so much easier to be kind to others and to, maybe make better choices in relationships and better choices with, you know, the job maybe you're doing, right? 100% agree with that. That's, that sound right? It's, that sounds so important. 100% true. I mean, it's really, really true. Uh, there's such a connection um, between our body and our emotional state. And then, you know, it's, um, you know, we got to do our best uh, to, to stay healthy and work on our, our, the physical aspects, but then, you know, obviously the, uh, the emotional, and spiritual aspects as well through meditation. You do those two things, man. Um, you're right. You're going to feel so much better in your own skin, in your body, in your emotions, and then you'll be a more of a benefit to those around you. And how did you meet? Like, it sounds like you and your wife have been together quite a while, right? Yeah. Like coming up to 19 years in July. Wow. Wow. You guys look so like when I see pictures of you and your family together, it just, it makes me so happy because your, your wife wow. is, she comments on a few posts here and there and she seems, I don't know her personally, but you got, she seems so authentic and she's just shared recently this very vulnerable post and, 
And you, you guys met, was she an actress as well? Cause I, did you meet on a show or she was a model? Um, she was, uh, she worked as a, as a model for 20 years, um, up until she got pregnant with our first kid, Lucas. And, um, even then she, she did some pregnancy modeling, but then stopped after that. Um, and now she's kind of getting back a little bit into it in the sort of, what does she call it? The, uh, they don't call it senior. They call it a classic division <laughs> in the classic division, but she, um, she's amazing. And yeah, we've been, we've been uh, together for a long time. We met, we met at the gym. I mean, the story is super cheesy. It was like the, the complete Tell opposite us. spectrum of what we're talking about now. Like, you know Tell what I mean? Us. Like we're talking about all things that are just of quality and substance. But when we met, <laughs> I thought she was hot in the gym and I, uh, I went up and I mean, but how old was I? I was just, I was a kid. Like I told you, I was a, like, I was a maniac back then. And, um, I went up and talked to her trainer. She was with a trainer who I knew and I made some stupid line asking him a question about my biceps or something only clearly only to get talking to her. It was right. painfully obvious and it was very awkward. And there was like this weird beat of silence after I asked this ridiculous question about how to get my biceps bigger or something stupid. And, and he goes, I don't know, Vanessa, what do you think? Or something like that. And it was just, so she, he knew right away what I was up to. And, and so after that, um, what did she, she say? came up to me what did, once. What did she? What did she say when she when he asked her about your biceps? She was. He was like. I was like. Do you have any? I, I can't even remember exactly what the question was, but it pains me even to try to think of what the question was. <laughs> Probably like, uh, you know, any idea, Tony, trying to get my biceps bigger or something like that. And um, and he and he just like there was like this weird like pause. He turns to Vanessa. And he goes. I don't know, Vanessa, what do you think? And then she looks at me and she goes, they look pretty good to me. I mean, it was so bad, dude. It was so bad. The whole thing was horrible. It reminds me of that Tommy boy thing where he asked the hot girl by the pool. It's like, which way is the, which way is the gym? And, yes, and, yes. Tom, and Chris Farley's like, the gym's that way. <laughs> yeah. They made a movie about it. They made a movie about how ridiculous I was. In the gym. Exactly. I love yeah, that. But bitch. she's, uh, she's amazing and a, and, a, and a beautiful woman of substance. Uh, and yeah. I, I, uh, I love her. I love that. What what makes your relationship work? Because 19 years and in, in the entertainment business, you're both very attractive and around no shortage of of situations that could be challenging and you know and you're gone a lot, you know, you're gone now and you're so what would you say is something that's really made your relationship work this well? Um learning uh really sort of loving communication with each other, even though we don't always do it. I mean, that's been a big key learning how to really communicate our issues or problems and, um, and avoiding blaming. Blaming is so, so toxic in a relationship. It's, it's probably one of the most toxic things in any relationship. So to avoid blaming and then, mm, um, yeah. like a general note, I think through both of our kind of, I don't know, spiritual development, if you will, learning to really truly cherish each other, like care about each other, care about each other's happiness and suffering. When I started in this, in our relationship, one of the reasons we were going through that tough time I, I alluded to earlier was um, I was, uh, I was a really pretty selfish guy. Like I was, I was nice and friendly and, and I was like sort of the same guy, but I, I really, um, I just, thought about like where I wanted to go on vacation and what I wanted to do for dinner and what I was like, it was, it, the world really revolved around me at the time, kind of in our relationship. And that's never going to work. <laughs> never. It, it wasn't good. For, it wasn't good for me. Uh, and it certainly wasn't good for her. Um, and ultimately that caused, um, you know, some problems. I think indirectly that was the root of it. And, uh, uh, and then we just kind of worked through it and learned. And I, and I just learned the benefit of um, kind of like the real way to, in a way, take care of oneself, I believe, is to really learn how to uh, cherish others, like really kind of exchanging your self kind of obsession or self-concern with learning and caring about others and being kind and thoughtful and respectful towards others. And, and it feels so good. It feels so good for both people. And um, mm. that's, uh, 
that that really is the mm-hmm. i think is a big key to uh to our relationship anyway and and along the way like what um so you've your kids I, you know i saw was it your daughter that sang hallelujah on the piano that you yeah yeah, oh, yeah 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 and and that was really watching i watching you how in her voice is beautiful i remember i think when we were I was visiting you on set, I think, and you showed yeah, me a little clip yeah. of it um, when I was going to play Hallelujah, but it didn't. It didn't. I don't think it cleared the the up the hallmark uh, Leonard Cohen or something. I wasn't able to do that, so I think I had to play like a Christmas song that, that on the spot I changed it to something. Um, but I mean, in your relationship and being a father, does that would you say the meditation? has really helped you to shift from being so like, has that been a big part of it as well? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Um, yeah. I don't think we'd still be together. I, I I'll say that right now. I don't know what she would, but Vanessa would say, but I don't think that if I deeply incorporated, um, mm-hmm. meditation and, um, sort of the aspects of meditation into my life, uh, I honestly don't think the relationship would have worked. I don't think, uh, I would have learned, uh, enough about me and um, and I wouldn't have gotten the changes that I wanted to make it with myself with respect mm-hmm. to myself. Mm-hmm. I don't think I would have been able to make them in a deep enough place without meditation. I, I think it would have been sometimes if we just kind of read a, a book or go to a therapist or something, it's very sort of surface level, you know, like it, I, I really encourage people to try to learn how to meditate and incorporate some of the things that you want to Uh, incorporate into your life but into meditation and then it gets so much deeper into your sort of into your psyche a little bit that it's much more uh, becomes ingrained into who you are um i I think at a much deeper level um the the analogy is and i I don't know if this is boring for people but the analogy is is if you have this really turbulent ocean and the the waves are going crazy and you take like a, a rock and you throw it into a turbulent body of water and and what kind of like impact is that going to have it's not going to it's not going to make a big impact, right? Um, and then if you have a very still, calm pond, and then you take a rock and throw it in there, you'll see like a big splash, and you'll see the ripples forever all the way to the edge of the pond uh, or, or the ocean, whatever it is. And uh, the analogy, of course, is in, a, in our busy sort of turbulent minds, uh, when we are running around and we're trying to make changes and do things and try to incorporate stuff, so it becomes so forgetful. Like we can't, we don't, we, it's like, it's like throwing a rock into a turbulent ocean versus when we learn to meditate and we try to incorporate changes into our life, we make that change and it just kind of gets in there and it pervades the whole mind and it really kind of gets into your, into your psyche. Mm, I've never heard it explained quite like that. That I love that. It makes, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, yeah, you're still, you're almost still enough to take action in a way that makes sense rather than always reacting and you're in like this this the seat of yourself in a way and you can create a bit rather than just being responding and reacting or there's so much outside stimulus and this is one thing i wanted to talk to you about too because i'm I'm reading justin baldoni's book called man enough do you know justin i know the book man enough yeah justin Uh, was on jane the virgin and he and he also directed six feet apart and clouds um, and he has a Ted talk, a Ted talk called man enough. He's coming on this podcast, uh, I think next week or the week after. And he Amazing. talks a lot cause he's like a really, uh, good looking guy and talks about being an athlete in high school and, and just all the, you know, the, all, all the external pressure. And then he was the guy with his shirt off on Jane, the Virgin all the time. And is like in in the business coming from modeling or the type of, you know, acting and, and this book has really I've been in this discovery as how do I operate Cameron and and do things for because they need to be done and for the love of doing them rather than getting admiration and external validation and love and acceptance and approval. And it's like, cause I've, I literally came up through that in modeling and, and I know you came up through that as well. And then acting you're I've, I've chosen another industry where you're, you're constantly getting feedback on how you're doing. And, and this book is really, really powerful because it's like, am I muscular enough? Am I smart enough? Am I, he kind of goes through the enough bits of it. 
and being man enough. And it's, he's being accused, I guess, of being a bit of a feminist. And it's like, if you take him out of context, it's like the real bro dudes are like, what is this? What is this concept? But it's freaking phenomenal. And it's really caused me to reflect once again, but almost like from another level, a new place of of motivation and like how do you how do i you know we do things to be to be seen as a good husband as a good host as a good actor as a good father and as having it all together and it's like so much of that external validation and like meditation is such a great tool to to begin to cultivate some some inner awareness rather than everything coming from the outside but like how have you how have you managed to be authentic and 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 down to earth in in and be motivated like from inside like is, is this something that is this a concept that you also have kind of dealt with so this concept uh is a major major part of my journey for sure like i the, and I've, I've mentioned to you i went into the modeling world from engineering and i said for various reasons maybe we'll get into them later so at the time, I, I really quickly, sorry guys, but I was uh, I was handicapped as a kid. I, I didn't walk until I was seven. I had a big metal A-frame on my brace. And I think that experience, and like I wore it night and day. I had mothers staring, you know, ki- you know, kids staring at me, mothers telling their kids not to stare. I, I walked on your, in crutch and back. On your, on your legs, like, legs. For, like Forrest Gump had, like where his legs Like Forrest were. Gump, but way wider and rigid. I couldn't walk with them. I had to use a crutch in back and a crutch in front. So for four years, night and day, I, I wore this. Yeah. And um, so I, that experience really, you know, I, as, a, as a young kid, I learned to identify, you know, being bullied and being made fun of and being stared at, learned to identify with being, you know, what the, the label in my mind was. And I know this isn't PC, but this is the label. It was like the crippled kid. And um, so my point getting to you, getting to what you were saying is as I went through life, I think part of the reason I went into athletics so hardcore and I, and I pushed myself so hard in different aspects and then ultimately made the choice to be in a profession where people would look at me physically and, um, you know, approve and, and, and applaud and, and, and it would be celebrated in a way. Versus yeah. being this kind of crippled kid. Obviously, I didn't realize it at the time, but as I kind of get older, you, you look back. Yeah. And um, I, I definitely made this change in my career path largely because of that. My friends were always like, dude, you've you got like a 3.7 GPA. You're going to like Oxford MBA school. Why Why are you leaving? And, and you know, I needed to feed that hole, even though it would be impossible to, um, through validation, external validation and um, the approval and everything else. So ultimately, it's also, I think, in many ways, why I tried to get in as good a shape as I got in back in the day. And even though I was kind of doing it in unhealthy ways, um, and uh, it led it led to a lot of, yeah, it led to a lot of suffering, ultimately, like, you know, a lot of like, it's not going to last, right? Because, you know, we're going to, there's going to be people more beautiful and more successful and more uh, everything. And um, I needed to be like the best in the thing. And I had to you know, through, I think really my early, all my children years, and it was very subtle, but it was in there. Um, and so ultimately I, uh, you know, going through my, can bring back meditation and this and going through and getting in touch with my authentic self and what, um, what that means to me and, um, and learning, like I say, to be happy regardless of external kind of circumstances and approval and validation and praise um, I, I definitely, uh, look at it very differently now. It's still obviously not something that I'm perfect with, uh, but I am so much better with it now and makes life so much easier. It's still hard when you hear those, you know, a nasty comment on Instagram or something, and, but then you're like, it is what it is. The way that I look at those, those, those things that people say that could hurt is if it's true, then I'm like, okay, well, thank you. That's something I need to change. Great. And if it's not true, then it's like, well, that's not true. Okay, great. You know, like either way, it's cool. Either it's true and you change or it's not true and it doesn't matter because it's not true. Um, and those, so those are, you know, some of the ways that I deal with some of the neg- negativity out there. Um, but ultimately, um, I, uh, I don't take the praise and the attention and the validation. I try not to take it personal. 
Mm. I try to offer it up to all of the things that have helped me build to who I am. Like, you know, even my parents and kind of my, you know, obviously my spiritual teachers and things like that. I just try to offer it up and I'd be like, Oh, that's awesome. That's amazing. So all these little pieces of the puzzle are making you happy in this way. And that's, that's great. So that way I don't, I don't take it as personally that builds the ego. Um, I try, I try really hard to. So those are some of the ways that I've, um, and then obviously going through uh, age, getting older, everything's getting tougher that, that you've got to learn how to deal with that. And if I, if I hadn't done it yet, it would be really hard, man. Cause um, obviously I'm, you know, I'm not the same guy that I was 15 years ago, but um, you know, I'm, I'm doing my best and I'm doing it for better reasons now. For, yeah. for better reasons right like to for vi- to feel good and to you know to be you know to, for vitality and to like rather than just to look like mr shred mm-hmm. even yeah yeah um, it's quite a journey man i mean and it's everybody has it in their old in their own way like you know ours is in the entertainment business so it's around visual things but there's so many people where they're smart enough and they've been like you know that education route that in or you know if a mother's use is like i'm not doing a good every that that thing where we are we are always comparing ourselves to others and how others are doing is is just the thief of joy. I mean, it is just comparison. Yeah, that's comparison. a great way to say it. Yeah. Well, I think it was Roosevelt that said it, but the the comparison is the thief of joy, and it's just it's it's so true. If I look at your Instagram or Thomas DeLauer's Instagram or you know, any of these other actors or or people that are, are my peers. And I'm like, that guy has 10,000 likes or, or 30,000 likes on a photo. And that guy, and I have this amount. And he's like, you can really, and, and I'm not, fortunately, I'm not, I don't get too caught up in that. But but I've had to work on it over, over the years of dis, sort of remembering who I am a bit and discovering that I'm so much more than just my career or looks or, or, or like movie, I have a movie tanks or a movie does really well. It was like my self-worth is not wrapped up in how well we say when calls a heart does, or one of these movies. I know you're there about to film another movie, but it's always good to talk to someone that's in like a very similar kind of position, uh, place in their job and career. And like, as you're hosting, you must have because the few times I've done little bits of hosting, I've I've found it really, really challenging, like really, really challenging. Like I it looks easy, like someone like you makes it look easy. But how did you get on Good Morning America when you were on All My Children? Like, how do you how did that happen? I think we froze. We froze in a really funny place, too. <laughs> this is the best look. Uh oh, what happened here? I think I totally, we totally dropped out. So I'm still recording. Uh, I'm sure Cameron's gonna just dial back in. I hear you. I'm starting to hear you. There you are. Hey, <laughs> You're. You froze in the. Did I? you Did I freeze in a funny position? You froze in the best face ever. Oh yeah. What was it like? It was, it was like you were looking up and you're like, it was, it was very, <laughs> very inquisitive. It's like, I asked you a very hard math question. You're like, it was funny. I'll show oh, that's you. Hysterical. I'll show you a screen grab. I can just edit easily right before I ask the question. I just, how much, how tell, let me know your little time frame him. Are you good? Do you need, how are First you? Of all, I'm super enjoying this at two 30. Um, Believe it or not, I'm doing a very strict blood glucose monitoring. So at two 30, I've got to do my blood glucose. All right. Do you want to just just do a little pause? Because I do have a couple more. I want to talk yeah. about the mo- the movie you're going. So at two thirty, I just push. Pause yeah, ra- and- around two thirty, we'll do a little pause. It takes literally, I don't know, fifteen seconds, and then Great. we'll do it. I'll grab my water too. I'll grab another water too because I'm I'm running out too. So is that a Beautiful. is that a um something blood glucose to check for your uh for the way your insulin's working and that? yeah yeah yeah. So I I um you know. I, part of what this co- coach has made, made me realize is even though I was low carb and doing intermittent fasting, my fasted blood glucose was still very high. So it doesn't, you know, there's lots of factors and you don't want your, your blood glucose to be constantly high. That be, builds insulin resistance and is really one of the markers for general like metabolic unhealth. So um, 
the, you know, my hormone levels were off. Like I mentioned, my cortisol and adrenals as well as gut health. So we're, that's one of the reasons I'm doing this whole detox is right. to hopefully it'll help my, um, and that's also why I'm not doing intermittent fasting for the moment because I'm doing really small meals throughout the day for the moment so that I'm not spiking my insulin at all. And whereas when I was doing intermittent fasting, I tended to really eat these big, big meals um, mm -hmm. and to get all my calories in because I didn't want to lose weight. I wasn't doing it to lose weight. So I, uh, I'm i doing sort of the old school of like six small meals a day, okay. but I'm still, I still fast for about 12 or 13 hours. Right. Right. For everybody just watching and listening, we had a technical, uh, our, one of our internets went, uh, went off and we came back and I just asked Cameron about, uh, he's, he's going to, we're going to take a little break here in about 10 minutes for, for some blood glucose. Um, but what I was asking you right, right before that was how do you, right when we fro froze was how do you go from all my children to good morning America? Because that's it. You know, it's and I was sharing before that. I don't know when I froze, but I was saying that just I found it really challenging to not be the one being interviewed. And a part of me doing this podcast, honestly, is is to develop that skill of listening. And to it's because it's not easy for me. Like I might seem casual at it or whatever, but like I I'm I the few times I've hosted for you know extra asked me to do a couple little things and and they they love you over there. Um, and, and I, uh, but I found it really tough, uh, to do. So that and I'm wondering how it's not an easy, did somebody offer you a job at Good Morning America? How did that happen? You no, know, it came directly from, I'd already started hosting a little bit through all my children. They had me, um, do different hosting gigs just around the soaps. And then I hosted a reality show. Uh, called I want to be a soap star or who wants to be a soap star or I okay. want to be a soap star. I don't know. Okay. And I did four seasons of that. So I started, I, I had done, that's when I did my extra. I did some stuff with extra around that time. But shortly after that, I started, uh, I did dancing with the stars. And when you do dancing with the stars and I was living in New York, uh, GMA are big, big supporters of dancing with stars. And so they would have me on regularly. And because I was, um, I mean, I don't know, because I was comfortable in that environment as a host already, I, I think I, I did a nice job in some of the interviews and had some fun and it was spontaneous and goofy and fun and whatever. Um, and they, that's when they asked me to start contributing. And then I was just a very casual, special contributor. But then when all my children got canceled, I was like, you know, I was kind of a full-time correspondent. Um, now I wasn't a news correspondent. I was doing mostly lifestyle and family and, um, very much of the lighter stuff, but it was, it was really cool. I, you know, I loved working for them. You did. What, what's one of the most, what's one of the biggest things you learned from hosting? Like what, what made, what made, makes you so good at it? And I know in your heart, you love acting and I, I love that you're there about to go do another film, but what's something that, that helps you like with your hosting that's made it, made you good at it? I think, you know, one of the things that's so important to me, even though I'm kind of like an amped guy, um, especially when I'm kind of, you know, hosting, I really truly try to keep it within the realm of authenticity to myself. So just like when we're acting, um, we want to try and be as authentic in this character as possible, like really, truly no acting at all. You, you want to be able to just listen and react and, and, and keep it as natural as possible. And I believe that aspect. So that's my goal. Um, in every character and everything that I'm doing, uh, I just don't want to feel the acting. I just, I just want to be, and I want to be how, how would this, like, it just as natural as possible. So with hosting, um, you know, I really try to do the same thing. I just really, I am what I am. I'm not a news. I'm not, a, I'm not a, like a de news desk reader. I can't give that voice and do all that. Kind of, like I'm just me. And, um, and I definitely, you know, gen generally have a lot of energy, but that's also me and you know, authentic. Um, and so that when, when you see people like um, Oprah and Ellen and they are so true to who they are as a host, like I feel like that is one of the biggest things that you can do. And you do that too. You do that too when you do your hosting that you're doing it now and when you do it with extra too, like you're not trying to be somebody else. You know, it's like the Howard Stern story when he was putting on that voice that he used to have 
he was, you know, wasn't going anywhere. And then all of a sudden he just dropped the whole, you know, radio persona and started to be himself. And he was, became like, you know, the biggest DJ ever. Um, so I think those, that, that's honestly um, my big, my big goal as a, as a host or a presenter is to do it with enthusiasm, to love what I'm saying. Even if I don't, I'll, I gotta love it as authentically as I can find something about it that I can authentically love it. You, you know, go. um, and, yeah. and, and then, and, uh, just be myself. Wow. You, you do, you do a good job of it, man. And obviously you've had these many different versions of it along the way that you've, that you've done. And didn't, you got nominated for an Emmy, right? Was that, was that through all my children or was that for yeah. hosting? Don't, don't you have a hosting? Emmy uh, too, both. Though? I got, I got nominated yeah. as a host. I think I, I've got, I won some Emmys as a host, but that was, um, I didn't win the, the, I didn't win like a hosting Emmy. I got an Emmy because we won as a show and I was the host, but uh, I, I got nominated a couple of times for a uh, supporting actor uh, daytime. Yeah. Cool. On the, all my children. How awesome is that? Yeah, it was cool. I was, I was, it was, um, you know, they, it, it, a lot of it is very storyline driven. I was given a story where my love interest was killed off and it was very, I was very close to her and, um, so a lot of emotion there and it was a great story. And so that, that, and then the other time I got nominated, I don't even remember what I submitted, submitted, but, uh, I don't know what's cooler. Are you winning a slam dunk competition against Terrell Owens? And, and we're going to say one because now we know the real story but, <laughs> the, or, or being, or, or having an Emmy and, and you have an Emmy for hosting, whether your show won it or not, you won it. Yeah. yeah also, yeah. I still can't believe that you had, now I remember you telling me about your legs and the braces and then to be yeah. slam winning a slam dunk competition. I mean, it's, it's such a it's lot quite of a turn probably, around. It's quite a, how, and I don't know if we have time before you you take this test, but how in the world I'm keeping an eye on it for you too. We got four minutes. We got, yeah, it doesn't have to be exactly like just okay. sometime after two thirty. How do you make that journey from that, from being bullied for having these crazy Forrest Gump style things on your legs at what age was that? I got them on when I was two and a half. Um, and then I got them off shortly before I turned seven. I'm going to try and show a picture so people maybe can see. Because um, now you're like a very high level golfer. You played basketball at a very high level. You're slammed. Down. I just love it. You have a picture. I want to see it. Yeah. I yeah. Can, I guess you know, you can even cam text it to me and I'll throw it in the, the YouTube. Oh, there you go. Okay, good. This. That's what I'll do then. Yeah. That, yeah there's the picture right there. Right at that yeah. moment. There's that picture. Yeah. Cause yeah, we yeah, all yeah. have that. I have that picture. Do you have a Forrest Gump moment when you were just like, where you just broke free of that like restraint? Do you, do you have something like that? You know, unfortunately, no, man, it was really, <laughs> no, I'm, you know, it was, it was, it sucked. It was no breaking out of it. It was, um, it was like I say rigid, so I couldn't walk with it. I had to clank, and I, I lifted myself. I had a crutch in front and a crutch in back. I'd lift myself up and swing this contraption forward, and I did that for four years. And uh, and it was um, unbelievably difficult for a kid of that age. And I can only imagine my parents what they went through now, being parents ourselves. But um, mm. I uh, I didn't have. Yeah, I remember there was one moment where. I got really where I lost it. Like I just lost it. I remember that moment. So the opposite of a Forrest Gump breakthrough moment, like where mm. I, I was trying to do something of fixing like an air rifle or something and I couldn't do it and I, I couldn't move and I couldn't get out and I was trapped and I just started swinging my crutch everywhere and my parents didn't know what was going on. And I mean, I guess they knew what was going on. But, mm. um, and then I remember also, uh, I remember when I got it off the very first day I was allowed to take it off for 30 minutes a day. So you have to realize my legs had not been used for four years. I had, I had, you know, um, what was wrong? People make fun of my, they were, they were, they were bowed or what was wrong with them? No, I, so the head of my femur bones, um, were degenerative. It's a bone. It's a bone disease called leg Perthes disease, leg calf Perthes disease. And, um, and it's a degenerative, the bones start to degenerate and become soft. And they can't support the load of your body. So what they do is they move your legs out and they put this kind of truss structure below you. This is the A-frame to support your load. So your legs aren't being used. And uh, and so that way I didn't use my legs for, for, for four years. Yeah, crazy. So 
I remember that very first time we went out to dinner to celebrate that I was able to take my brace off for 30 minutes a day uh, for six months. Um, and I remember walking up and down the hall, the, the aisle way at the I didn't sit still. Nothing, nothing changed from that for many years, but I, I walked up and down the hallway or the uh, aisle way. And I remember honestly, the sensation of how foreign, like my legs felt like shells. Like I remember you got to think it like being a seven year old or almost seven year old kid and learning your legs for the first, the sensation was so surreal. Um, I'll never forget that. Like I'll never forget how crazy weird it was that I was doing that. I just, that's, that's so those are my only, those are my big memories. Oh, it's just wild. And then you're running triathlons and you, you chose, I mean, that, I can't imagine how your parents must have felt, you know, like obviously I have a 17 year old son and, you know, we play beach volleyball together and he's like one of my big whys to why I work out and train and, you know, ARP wave and all these different things is so that I can play beach volleyball with Ollie because it's, it's so much fun. But um, it's beautiful to see the two of you guys together. It really is. Yeah. I, I mean, being a father, man, I'm sure you can relate. There's few things that I feel like I was meant to do uh, more than be a dad. <laughs> like, yeah. Good for you, man. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Well, it's two 30. Why don't you do your, I'll go grab a water. Yeah. We'll take a little, okay. uh, I'll just keep it. This picture you sent me is so I'll put, definitely put it in the, but I love your, I love your, uh, look at that. I cannot imagine what that would have felt like, man. Yeah. It was nuts. It's, I, I, I sent you, I sent you a couple. Yeah. I think those are okay. the only ones. Those are the only ones that my parents took. I, I sent you three, and um, Dude, and it's funny, wow. you know. Yep, I see them here, doing pull ups. Look at you! Wow. My son just brought me home this uh, kind of natural boba thing that's got almond milk and and uh, he put a little bit of maple syrup in it, and it's like. Uh, and then, but our fridge is like freezing. So we're, this has got like layers of ice in it. Um, yeah. But is it, it must be good. I mean, now, do, how much coffee do you drink about? This is decaf black tea. Um, I drink one cup a day, man, because I. That's amazing. One, that's amazing. That's nothing. That's. Yeah. And it's a six ounce cup. Like I'm, I'm a, but I'm a snob. Like I do a pour over. I'm like all fancy about it. I grind it. Like I, I'm not, I don't drink. I I don't like being altered, meaning my home, the base of what Paul feels like in general is, is good. Like, you know, some people, when they drink alcohol, they like being a little drunk or a little high when they smoke pot. I can't, I can't, I can't, I love being 100% sober. So caffeine also does a little bit of like, it makes me vibrate differently. So I don't like the, I don't really love, love the feeling of caffeine, but I really love coffee. I like making it. I like finding good beans and, and, and I like like uh, the whole thing of the ritual, but then, you know, I just yeah. got matcha, matcha tea with the little whisk and, and, you know, you can yeah. create ritual around any habit and, and get addicted yeah. to it in a good way too. Like if, if yeah. you know, like you can have, your ritual around how you prepare vegetables and make it just as charming if you want to. <laughs> oh, yeah. You, no, I mean, it's a good point. Look at you dunking there. I just thought I'd throw that in as a yeah. contrast to the kid yeah, in the brain. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're going to, we're going to, I'll put that uh, in here on the YouTube video, like right there. So man, it's so, it's so good to actually talk with you. And I, and I, this happened to me with Ryan Peavy and with Andrew Walker, who I spoke with and Dan, Daniel Lissing you know, all people, you know, really well. Um, yeah. and, and even Andrea Brooks is, is this form of, it's like you and I are catching up. Cause I don't know, there's very little of this. I actually know about you, but it's so interesting to me. And I just, and, and it's been such a cool way to catch up to people, uh, on this podcast and get to know. Yeah, it must be. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm thoroughly enjoying it, man. So I, I get it. Like if you had the opportunity to do that with, um, you know, several people, what a, what a beautiful way to kind of catch up and kind of connect a little bit. I think it's really important. And my, 
you know, my podcast is called The Grass is Greener, and it's in reference to that quote is the grass is greener where you water it. And, and it's nurturing the things you love, right? Whenever I hear someone like you, who's been in a relationship for 19 years and, you know, to, 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 to end that, the agonizing quest, thinking things are better somewhere else and finding a way to nurture what you have including yeah. the people that are love the one you're with, like the people that are in your life and the grass isn't greener on the other side. The grass is greener where you water it. And so my, my that's, those are the kind of conversations I, I like having as Paul. So yeah. I was like, why don't I have these, there's enough people following both my platform and say Ryan's platform or your platform or Daniel's that between us, what if a half a million people, get inspired to be kinder to themselves a bit in their thoughts and then to treat others and maybe even save a life by introducing them to something that one of my guests have discovered that helped them with say, you know, their kidney like you or just in general feeling freaking good in this temple, this frame. That's kind yeah. of what my podcast is, is, is I'm excited about sharing the people like you and people and having conversations that we kind of unpack little moments of your life that are, I find really interesting. You do a great job of it. I mean, it's, it's, uh, I think it's really important to highlight that too, for people. Um, otherwise we're out there always chasing, trying to find the next best thing, the next, you know, the perfect partner, the perfect job, the perfect place to live. And perfect, instead of just, like you say, watering the grass where you're at, you know, really nurturing it. And people always ask me, do I like New York or LA better? I'm like, I love them both. I love wherever yeah. I've lived on both because I, I just try to like embrace it and enjoy it. Like I love Vancouver. I love New York. I love Toronto. I love like, I, you know what I mean? You just gotta, like you say, water the grass where you're at, I, I think is the essence of what you're saying. It is for sure. And gratitude, like you just touched on it briefly there too, is like I was talking to Candace Cameron recently and I'm like, well, Candace, like what's, you know, what's the key to, you know, your life right now? And, and, you know, what's something you want to share? And she was like, gratitude really is like a superpower. And, it, and, and I find like you're, I've, I, I very much relate to your, I can relate to that exactly like with New York. I, if I'm there, it's great. And if I'm in LA, it's great. It's like, I'm very happy and content sort of where I am. And I feel like being able to focus on, on all the things that you actually have in, in the people that are in your life that, you know, that are and and be able to be grateful for the things that we have is such a powerful way to keep having more of that wonderfulness happen to you. It's like, it's almost like the more yeah. you focus on negative things, the more of that you get. And the more you focus on positive things that at least that's what I've discovered. Well, it's, you're not the only one for, for centuries. They've been discovering that. I mean, the mind, you know, that's the mind is incredibly powerful. We, you know, they use the word manifest your desires now and all that kind of stuff, but they've been doing that. I mean, you know, Buddha talked about that, uh, you know, 200, 2,600 years ago. Yeah. Like the mind, like the more, the more negative your mind is, the, the more likely that projection of negativity will kind of, um, I don't know, just in, increase negative things around you. And then the same, the same as opposite, if you're the more positive and grateful and upbeat and respectful and kind, and you are and cherishing others and thinking about others and the, the more, you know, things generally kind of work out better. Not always, but oftentimes it's pretty amazing how, how it actually makes a difference. Yeah. And would you, would you, do you can't consider yourself a Buddhist? I've heard you mention Buddha a bit. Like how are you, do you raise your kids a certain way? Do you, are, are you religious in any way? I was, no, I was, I was uh, raised Christian and, and my, I, I, I'm, very open. And I, I definitely am fascinated and have got a lot of benefit from Buddhist psychology for sure. And for, from philosophy, I love the sort of the science of the mind aspect about it. I find it really, um, really beautiful, very, very user-friendly and, and easy. So for me, it, it's helped me a lot. Uh, I can relate. I mean, I spent some time in India and pr pretty much a decade of yoga through different types of yoga. And though I would, was it raised Christian and I have a relationship with Jesus in this, and I still love, I have a lot of Buddhas around my house and I 
really embrace and and appreciate the nonviolent approach and the non duality. Like I always, I've always had a hard time with someone being wrong and someone else being right. And I find in Buddhism, there's at least not all Buddhism. I'm sure in some of the more you know, the, the darker tantric sides of it, there's a bit of violence, but very little, even in the history of Buddhism, there's, there's the least violence. And that's, yeah, something that, seems so. that, that's something that I appreciate about those people and seeing, spending time with them in India. And, you know, very cool. I, they're very, it's a very beautiful story, especially, you know, how Buddha became Buddha. But, you know, I, no matter how I look at it, there's, there's this deep, almost like destiny with Jesus for me for some reason. And it doesn't look yeah. in any way like my parents' Christianity. Yeah. I, good for I, you. Yeah. It's just, it's my relationship to God. That's just the form it takes and the understanding more about, you know, what Jesus was like interests me rather than being like the, what people look at as Christians in the world, because there's some really gnarly things done in the name of Allah or, or Jesus and, you know, or even, you know, the Old Testament God, but there's very f few evil things done in the name of Buddha. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true. But I, I think also with all of that, I mean, not to get too much into it, but I, I also think that, um, you know, each sort of religious path at its pure core is so beautiful. Like, even though there's extremists that will do things that will sure. probably not be in line with what the original kind of like, you know, teachings of, let's say, Jesus or whoever, or um, I, I really feel like, you know, there's always going to be, there's always going to be people that are kind of taking things to extremes, I think, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. When you are meditating, do you find it a mental experience for you or is it a spiritual experience or a bit of both? I think it's a bit of both. I think that's a really good question. A tough one. Um, I, I feel like it's a bit of both. Like it's, um, relying on aspects of, of spirituality for sure. And then, um, but also working, working with the mind in that way and, yeah. and sort of aligning them. Absolutely. Who would you say is the most interesting person that you've interviewed? Like, cause you've met, I know I've seen you with Laird Hamilton up and weren't you invited to their Hawaii to do some, do we do the ice bass with them? Was that, that was, Oh you, right? man. Yeah. That was so cool, dude. That was like so hard. I mean, you're the king of that. I, uh, the actual solid ice bath. Like I'm good in cryo. I'm good in cold temperature. I'm good in baths with lots of ice in it, but getting into a bath, solid ice, like that was so, that was too much for me. I, I was, I, I, I think I only lasted a minute. Um, but, uh, I was still awesome. I did their training and I went, I went paddle boarding with the king of pat. Like it was very, very cool experience. But so that was a real highlight. I've done some really, um, I mean, there was one interview on Entertainment Tonight where I was interviewing the new Han Solo and Harrison Ford, this was all planned, Harrison Ford came in the room with Ron Howard, uh, who was directing the, the new Han Solo. So I'm interviewing, the I forget his name, I apologize, the new Han Solo. Harrison Ford's coming in the room with Ron Howard to surprise him in this interview. We caught it all on camera. Like that was really cool. Like that is pretty amazing. Um, yeah. I got to cover, um, I mean, I got to cover a lot of the star Wars uh, interviews and red carpets and with uh, um, Carrie Fisher. And I had great moments with her before she passed. And, mm. uh, I did. Um, I mean, Halle Berry, I, I've always been a huge like crush on her. And so every time I got to be with her, it was very, very cool. I got, um, I, I had so many, um, I mean, cool like, interviews like, and like uh, Deepak Chopra came by home and family and TD Jakes, like yeah. that pastor you've had your, yeah. and I mean, that's just home and family that I was watching, but I'm sure along the way, you've probably met some, uh, some really, had you, have you ever met anyone where something they shared with you were like, it, something clicked and you were like, I'm going to take that and I'm going to do that. Um, all the time, whether <laughs> I, I actually all the time. I mean, you know, I, I'm like you, like I'm fascinated by this stuff and I, and you have the intention to incorporate it all, you know, into your life. But, um, and I, oftentimes I do, um, but uh, it's impossible to incorporate all. Otherwise we'd have, you know, we'd just be trying to do new stuff all the time. But I, I've really, 
I've learned so much. Like I've learned, it's been incredible, really incredible. I mean, I, I definitely learned a lot from Laird and Gabby. Um, uh, I've learned from so many people like guests on home and family and, and yeah. good morning America entertainment tonight was more kind of celebrity wow factor, which was super cool. Like getting flown right. with Scarlett Johansson to New Zealand to, to hang out with her for a day on her set. Like, awesome. What did I learn? I learned that she's awesome, but it wasn't <laughs> like, you know, it wasn't going to change my life. It just was a really, really cool experience or, right. or doing like a, a live interview on good morning America with Jim Carrey, who was out of his mind, great and cool and funny. And, and I tried to just to keep up with him, And it was like, oh, that you know, been cool. and, you know, all those sorts of things are really cool. But to, for me, the most memorable experiences were, um, the the beautiful interviews that we would do on home and family we just had great guests on that show like you said a few um and i wish i could even begin to name them because when you start thinking of your favorite like it just kind of gets to be one big old mix in my mind but I, I, you know that was one of the best things about that show was that we literally only tried to help people like we literally just tried to help people and spread positivity in the world like wow. that's all the show was now wow. Some may argue, like you and I may argue, that we weren't necessarily helping people in the kitchen all the time, but mm -hmm. but that but they were happy and they they you know what I mean. Like in other words, we help people in every way, and in the kitchen every once in a while we did something that was sort of in line and, and healthy. But most of the time in the kitchen, it was more comfort food, you know, just trying to make people feel happy. Um, but the show was just a a beautiful, beautiful place to work, and it it, it was all my children got canceled. It broke my heart uh, for sure and scared the daylights out of me. I thought I was going to be on that show forever. It came out of nowhere. But when Home and Family got canceled, it like, it deeply broke my heart and cut punch because really? it was, it was the show I wanted to, to be on forever. Like it was really? so, it was so beautiful. Yeah. It was just a beautiful, beautiful place. The people, um, the content, um, the nature of the show, uh, working for Hallmark in that way. I mean, we still get to do movies, which is awesome. And you get your series, but, um, it was really, it was a beautiful thing every day to go to work and just try to help people. Yeah. And you guys were like a really tight family. It was very obvious when we'd go visit you there, the vibe there, and you guys had it so well, uh, structured and organized. Are you able to share why it got canceled? Do you like, do you have a final reason or? Yeah, I mean, the, the official reason is that they wanted to go in a different direction. Um, and I think that what that means is, um, I think there's many reasons. And, you know, some of them are a little bit more behind the scenes, I think. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think the different direction aspect is they really, you know, the, the executives now at Hallmark and Crown Media, I think, are really focusing on primetime and on the movies and on the series. And um, I think... Um, you know, the, the tricky part about that is that we were still making money and our ratings were as good as they've ever been, if not better. And we were making a lot of money. And um, so it's confusing, mm. but there's always one of the things that you and I have both learned a million times in this business is there's always so many factors that go into a decision, whether a show stays on the air or it doesn't, or whether somebody gets cast or somebody doesn't get cast. There's, there's a million different factors that are involved in, you know, there's, um, there's some definitely that, that we probably won't know, but we can guess. And, and, you know, not all of them we talk about here, <laughs> right, but then, right, you know, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, well, I, I was wondering how you were doing with that because it is a long time to seven years. You were on there seven. I was only on for three years. The show was on for nine. I, I honestly felt like I'd been on for nine, you know? Oh my gosh. No, I, I was only on, on three there. years. Oh, that's right. I, 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 yeah. For some reason I thought it was longer than, Wow. So the show was nine years and you came in. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Sick. I, I know that. Uh, and so you're and it was hard for you to do these movies because how many Hallmark movies have you done? I think this will be, um, unless I'm wrong, my 16th. And I, I did, uh, you know, two or three a year for the first few years. And then when I started on ET, I could only do one, um, sometimes two, usually one a year. And then on Home and Family, I, while I was on Home and Family, the whole time I was on, I only did one movie. So it was much harder to do them. Yeah. Yeah. Because of the schedule. And did you miss yeah. it? You must do, did you miss doing the movies? 
Yeah, I did. I missed it a lot. I'm so excited to be back up here and get ready for another one. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, it's like, it's a, uh, they're, they're beautiful scripts and they feel good and they're all full again, like full of positive uh, messages. Mm -hmm. And um, I, uh, it's really fun. It's good. really, really fun to shoot a movie and um, you know, you bang it out in three weeks. So it doesn't, it's not like not glamorous, uh, but it's just, it's pretty darn cool. Yeah. And who's your co-star and what's the name of the movie? I, well, you can't I can't, about, you can't talk. I about can't it. talk about, I could tell you off, but it hasn't been announced yet. And it's, I'll just say this, that, I mean, it's so silly to me for me. Like, I, I mean, I'll just tell everybody, I don't care, but I've been instructed not to. Um, it's, it's basically the thing that I feel like the, um, the people that I hear about on Instagram that uh, watch me on, on Hallmark uh, have asked for the most. So I'll just say okay. that. <laughs> okay. I think I can, I, I know who people, everyone asked the most with me would be Candace again, uh, Danica again, or Lacey. So you don't have to make any gesture about that, but what is the, uh, can you, what's the story about? Can you share about that or no? Not really. I actually can't, you can't man. Can't. I can't. Okay. All right. All right. That's you know okay. why? Um, because if I say the story, people will then know people immediately will put it together. what's going okay. on. No, no, I can yeah. get it. I get that. Yeah. And you're, so for those who's watching and listening, so you, we quarantined for two weeks until at least during COVID. And then in about 15 scheduled days, you can, we can knock out one of these. Is that, that's usually 14 or 15, right? Yep. That's yeah. exactly right. Yeah. So they're starting um, on Wednesday. Uh, I have to quarantine till Saturday. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, they're shooting everything without me that they can't. And then starting Monday, I will shoot for the next 12, but you're right. In total, it will be 15. Oh, they're getting your stuff that you're not in done. That's smart. That saves on the yeah. whole crunch time for you to be there less too. I love that. Do you have now? Do you have the other person in this movie, the other person in this movie has, um, has already finished the quarantine. Ah, okay. Oh, wow. Okay. Now people are going to really start digging on who else is quarantining. Um, do you have a technique or a process for, getting yourself in, in the, in a place where when you step on set that you're comfortable, do you have a, a technique, like an acting thing you do? Do you, do you have something that, that you do? Yeah. As far as comfortable, I mean, as far as, um, you know, it obviously depends on kind of what the scene is like, you know, I, I, if it's a scene where I'm playing a detective and I'm all ramped up or whatever, then obviously I really kind of get that. I, I love, I'm very, 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 very big on, knowing exactly what happened right before almost even saying that to me, to myself, I should say, you know, what, you know, if, if there was something that it's a direct pickup from or coming from on the show, like for me, it's, it's really important why I'm there. And, um, mm -hmm. that that's very important. Now, as far as just being kind of comfortable in the moment, I just, I do a little, I, I do a lot of breathing. I do a lot of like, just kind of, um, you know, not deep breathing. So it's weird. I try to be, I try not to be weird about it, but I, uh, I'll just, I'll just do some gentle breathing that is deeper than, you know, I think our normal, our normal, our normal rhythm, but it's not in such a way that people around me can hear or notice that I'm doing it. So. Right. Right. Like a box breath or something like our force. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Something. Yeah. Essentially a box breath. Yeah. I mean, it's basically that exactly. Mm, I find that technique is really helpful, uh, for, if you're in traffic or if you're about to audition just to, to, to inhale for four, hold it for four, exhale for four and hold it out for four. I mean, that's maybe a version of the box breath. There's also the Andrew wheel four, seven, eight. There's, um, you know, do you know that Denzel Washington does 30? This is what I've heard. I've never seen him do it, but, uh, this is from somebody who was on set with him does 30 really intense breaths, uh, like with his head down by his knees before, depending on the scene, but in uh, fences, when he had, when his character had to be, does like 30, right before they say action, he's there going, <laughs> and then he comes right back up to the camera and he's got, he's done this thing of super oxygenated is apparently I never actually seen him, but he's not, that. is he out of breath after he does it? It's not hyperventilating. It's, it's, you know, I guess it would be the, what I did was a pretty hyperventilating. Maybe it's a, um, that's how it was described to me, like a breath, almost like a breath of fire, but a little slower. But I mean, interesting. I, I mean, it, you know, being a Wim Hof guy, Wim Hof, obviously being kind of the king of ice baths and breath work, um, or at least one of the kings, um, 
you know, there's, there's, there's a lot to that. Like, I know you're, I know you're, you're the first guy who even mentioned Wim Hof to me. And then I went on a deep dive and I've, I've really enjoyed, um, uh, obviously like, you know, some of his really basic, I'm very, very basic with it, but basic breath work. Mm, do you have his app? He's got a really great app for just, you, you do 30 breaths and then you tap it and you hold your breath out for as long as you can, like a minute or so. And then you inhale for 15 seconds and you do another round. Do you have that app? Yep. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's basically the version of what I do. I do three rounds of that. Yeah. Three, you know, and, and I know there's many, many, many different levels above, you know, where he can take people, but I, um, you know, I also have my other meditation practice. So I, I, I just use it as a way to kind of oxygenate and, and remember how to de how to breathe deeply and to use those muscles. And, um, cause I think in, in busy life, it's so easy to just to breathe so shallow, you know? Yeah. Right. I mean, when you and I talking about the foundations, right, of you know, not eating processed food and getting good sleep and hydration. And um, I would think having some form of breath practice, because we are right, we literally never breathe deep. And, and not only does it do great things for moving your lungs, but it's just like moving oxygen everywhere. And also, it for for shifting anxiety and stress i mean having a breath work practice of some sort at your disposal for when life happens and you can go to your breath quickly or go to right or into your meditation in that sense but i i i think it's another one and we teach that too in our in our course of breath work beautiful as, as a pillar, beautiful a tool pillar for um having your life you know work yeah, that's great. I didn't even know that that was part of your your sort of protocol. That's um, that's really cool. I mean, I it's definitely I, uh, very powerful. I can't believe I introduced you to uh, to Wim Hof. I don't. When did we do you that? Did. Where, where, where yeah, we were at Christmas Con. I mean, it wasn't that long ago. I think I'd seen him before, or whatever. But I, I remember you said, "Do you know Wim Hof?" And um, and I was like, "Wait, what?" Gesundheit. And uh, and you. Uh, <laughs> And you explained him a little bit and I was like, oh my God, that guy sounds incredible. And, um, and then I started, it was at the Christmas con when, well, the in only Jersey. one. Yeah. In Jersey. I think it's the only one we've only done one, right? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So it was that in New Jersey. Yeah. I think that's. And I probably. just finished. It was two weeks or like, no, that's not true. I was, um, like a month out from my, my surgery when I was there. Your sur your yeah. surgery a month before Kidney your cancer. surgery. Right. I've, no, I was, I had just done my surgery uh, maybe a month or two before. Oh yeah. Right. I remember you eating these really designated portions of food. <laughs> like, yeah, I yeah. Well, though, I, that was, I was on a pure kind of vegan uh, diet for a while. Um, oh yeah, that's right. At that that's time right. too. So I had all these, all these food prep meals. Yeah. Now I would, I want to wrap this up, but I just want to touch You're coming. Are you going to general hospital after this movie did i hear that somewhere? yeah 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 i'm going to general hospital yeah starting um sometime this summer i don't even know i don't i don't know much i have a meeting with the network either tomorrow or wednesday i don't know and they're going to tell me <laughs> because everybody's asking sort of what's going on and i i don't know when i'm starting i don't know what my character's doing i don't know anything but i uh, frank valentini who's the executive producer there he's a pretty amazing guy and he i've been friends with him from new york days he was on one life to live um directing producing etc and i was on all my children and um I, at one point home and family was going to go down to two days a week and uh frank and i have kept in touch a little bit through the years and so i just reached out and i said frank i think i've got a couple days a week free and if there's anything there that i could do a little like story arc or whatever and he was like let's talk and then so we talked and we came up and i was going to do it as a as a um, as a job in conjunction with home and family mm. and, uh, and then home and family got canceled. And I was like, maybe it was meant to be, maybe it was meant to be that I'm going to head over to gym. So. How do you, how are you feeling about going back into that level of uh, like, what's, what's the most pages you've memorized in a day on all my children? On all my children, it was 59 pages, 59 pages of dialogue. And a lot of those were monologues. Um, that, and it was, that, that you had 59 pages that you had to memorize and say them in a way that looks relatively believable and, and get nominated for an Emmy for. So, okay. Correct. Correct. Uh, I, um, 
<laughs> I actually used that show. I submitted that show as an Emmy reel, actually. I, I don't know if that was the year I got nominated, but I, um, I it took me a week. You know, it obviously takes a lot of prep, but yes, it was 59 pages. I mean, it was several shows. So I think I had three shows, but because of how they shoot, the set was up only for a certain amount of time. So we shot everything in, in, in those, um, in those, well, in that one day. And, uh, I, I, I like, I, it was, I was like a machine that day. Wow. That's a, that's a gnarly, and you're going back into that world or have they chilled out the day, the pages per day a little bit? No, I think it's only got, well, in a, gotten in a worse. Way it's, gotten, it's gotten worse because they're shooting more and less time. Like they're to save money. They're, they, they go dark a lot. Um, oh my gosh. but, uh, I think the scenes from what I understand, the scenes are shorter. Okay. And, um, so, you know, there's, I, I think there can be, you know, between, 20 and 40 pages a day. Do you have a good memory? Is it easy for you or is it challenging? It was really easy for me. I'm hoping it's still as easy for me. I <laughs> haven't acted in two years. So yeah, I will find out on Monday, um, a week <laughs> today, whether, uh, whether my memory is still kind of firing because it's, it's a bit of a muscle, you know, you know that. Yeah. And, um, I got really, really good at it back in all my children. It was something that yeah. was incredibly strong. Part of my prep was that I could memorize really easily so I could just relax and, mm. and be, um, I didn't have to worry about memorizing very much, but I don't know if it's still there. We'll find of out. Of course. it will be like riding a bike for you, man. It's going to be better. So better. It'll be better than ever. I th I'm excited for you. I'm glad. I mean, I'm sure you, I know you love hosting and especially the family at home and family there and. But it's like I'm, you know, I, the, your fans. I didn't realize you'd done sixteen. I mean, you're you're catching up to Andrew Walker Land. Um, How many has he done? He's done. Well, he does twenty. 20. He's done twenty. I think He's, Brennan Elliott is probably the most, though. You know Brennan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is he the most? Brennan Brennan probably has because uh, he does a lot of them, like mystery series. Sure. And then he's, you know, I don't know, man. I think he's and and he. Um, yeah, I, I think wow. he's done a lot. I think he's probably up above 22, 20 as well. Wow. So that so that's what's next for you. This movie which we we can't discuss and and um and then General Hospital. My buddy Jason Thompson's been on that show for a long time. He Jason Thompson's from the same little uh actually Kelly Strite, the modeling agent that found Jason Thompson and I and Trisha Helfer found us kind of in the same little pool puddle of water over there in the north the north of Alberta. get that kid out man yeah all right you know, i love jason i didn't know you guys were we guys go way back it's cool. yeah we go back to the same you know moment that we were both kind of discovered in that way to 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 model but then i want to let you go but there's one more thing this all health 360 you started another instagram page and just and and let me know where where everybody watching this can also find you i know they can find you at cameron matheson right is that right Yep, Cameron Matheson on Instagram, and then All Health 360 is um, uh, just a different, a different handle that I started uh, because very much like you, as we've been talking about, I'm fascinated with all different aspects of health, spiritual health, emotional health, um, you know, fitness and exercise, as well as uh, nutrition. And I, I, I've been able to interview and talk to so many different people in my kind of journey that um, I just wanted to try to put it out there, and and I. I've sort of been slacking lately, but um, it's just a little passion project of mine, just sharing things that I've I've learned and experienced and, and also interviewing people that I want to learn more from. So yeah. I, I hopefully will keep it going. So would people look at your Instagram to find out who your when this next movie is and what the co and who the co star is? Well, they'll find out shortly, obviously. Are you are they going to try yeah. to keep it under wraps while you're filming? No, that's impossible. Um, that is I don't know, man. I hope not. I hope not. Yeah. They'll hopefully find out. Yeah. Find out soon. I'll, I'll post it. Well, definitely myself and this other individual will, post. will, uh, will post it soon. Well, that's, that's good. It's been really, really fun to, to, you know, get to know you better. Like I've always felt like I knew you, but not like this. I, and I think the fans of your fans and the people that are excited for you to get back into acting, but also your health journey and just hearing, I can't wait to share those pictures of, of you. Um, just hearing the, the whole journey. Cause some people can look at you, Cameron, and just be like, this guy's got it all together. 
and in life must be easy for for you because you know you look you look this way and and it's it's a pre- not a prejudice but i once had this acting teacher i don't want to say his name but he went he looked at me and he's like life's been real tough for you hasn't it and he was being super sarcastic and it was like right before i was about to and he i guess he was from the mentality that he had, was under the impression that because i looked a certain way or or my physique was a certain way that life was just easy for me and and i think and it really stuck with me and I really, it really actually learned a big lesson that day to not judge mm. somebody just and to, cause you dive deep into your story, Cameron, and it's, you know, everybody has these, these level, these, le- these, these dragons to slay at certain ages and, and, yeah. and it's like, this life in a sense is a game and, and you win a level and then you got to face something else. And then there's another level and then you got to face you know, our, your ego or your, that, that thing in you that needs acceptance and approval from others. And then you get a little bit through that and then you get hit with a big health thing and then you get through that and then they cancel your favorite show. And it's just like, it's so, you know, you're, 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 I've always really liked and appreciated talking with you and getting to see you, even though we knew each other so briefly when we were in our, you know, teens really, or twenties for me or teens for me, I think early twenties for you. Yeah. But um, I'm I'm grateful, man. Thanks for I'm thanks, really, buddy. Thanks I'm, for saying that. I feel the same way, man. I really do. I really enjoyed this, and and it's true. I, uh, I I'm gonna have to turn the tables. I want to hear more from you too. I heard I heard a good amount from you today, but I want to hear more uh, as well. But thank you for taking the time with me, brother. Yeah. Yeah, man. And best of luck with this mystery film. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know if it's a mystery. I, I, I know, I don't know any inside. It could be a mystery, but I mean, mystery, uh, like the, the, your fight club that we don't talk about it. And of course, getting back on general or you've never been on general hospital before. No, it's the first time. Yeah. First yeah. Time. Going back to Dave, but go, going back to, to soaps though. That's uh that's a big deal. It's been 10 years. So Wow. Oh, you're, you're going to do awesome, man. Well, enjoy. I'm going to be reaching out to you really soon for your, your nutritionist guy, because I'm actually really interested in that level of sort of checking hormones, especially, you know, with, and some of the things, it sounds like he's great. And then also that amazing little cabin you're in, I'm going to be reaching out. uh, You'd love it. Yeah. You'd love it. Okay, buddy. Absolutely, man. You just reach out. Okay. Lots of love, Kim. See you, buddy. Okay. Love back at you, bud. Bye. Okay, man. Peace. Well, how was that? How fun was that? I hope you enjoyed that conversation uh, with Cameron as much as I did. Please remember to subscribe and be kind to others and to yourself, of course. And we'll see you right back shortly right here for Chris McNally. Uh, Check out my podcast, The Grass is Greener with Paul Green. That's me. And also paulgreen.com has got a lot of goodies on there. Uh, Ruth is adjusting things and making it a bit more interactive. Uh, Paul Green official on all of the social medias. And you're amazing. I appreciate you. Thank you for your generosity. I do concerts here on on YouTube, Fridays, usually at six, between five and six. Check the local listings. And then there's a gospel concert that's usually at three o'clock on Sundays. But this Sunday, which this will already be out, so it won't matter, is a little bit earlier. So Stay tuned. There's also a membership here on YouTube where you get some special perks and behind the scenes. We're working on an intimate little chat thingy that will be just with you and I. So I'm glad that you came. I'm glad you uh, stayed to the very end. And remember to be kind and loving and gentle and tender to yourself in your thoughts on purpose. And that fear is just means that there's no love. Fear is the absence of love. I love you, and uh, we'll see you out there in the world somewhere on a screen, most likely, but maybe in person. There's a lot of fan events coming up for, uh, like, uh, there's the romantic comedy. I do romantic comedy movies. There's there's uh, fan events, and there's a talk of a cruise. There's all kinds of things now that the world is uh, under a different perception of how COVID affects uh, everybody as a group and that will be exciting to see you in person so until then bye